don't wanna let you know you're so hypnotic magical go 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 go
Welcome fans, another Tufts University football game. Beautiful spin move, and he's still going. Touchdown, Michael Berluti. Five. Four. Let's go Jumbos! Welcome to the inaugural game of the 2022 NESCAC football season. This week, the Trinity Bantams from Hartford, Connecticut travel to Somerville to take on the Tufts Jumbos. I'm Sam Brill, joined here by Jared Cohen and the rest of our crew at JumboCast. Last year, the Jumbos traveled to Hartford to take on the Bantams, who jumped, and the Jumbos jumped out to an early seven to nothing lead. 
after the pass from Trayvon Woodson to Jackson Butler went for 72 yards and a touchdown, but Jumbos didn't have much luck after that. The Bantams scored 42 unanswered points before the Jumbos put on 21 in the fourth quarter. Trinity ended their season 8-1 and one last year. The Jumbos 4-5. and five. How did the Jumbos change the narrative this year, Jared? Thank you, Sam. I'm glad to be back. Let's get right into it. Uh, for me, if you're the Jumbos last season, it was a tale of two halves in more ways than one. For example, you look at last year's game against Trinity. Uh, it was uh, unfortunately a microcosm of the season where a lot of times didn't get off to good starts in the first half. In that game, they had 260 yards in the second half, but only 146 in the first. Got off to a slow start, and despite a big second half, couldn't get back into it. So this season, strong start consistency. That leads into our next point, pound the ball on the ground. The Jumbos last year, there was a night and day difference between games where they successfully established the run and games where they didn't. In the second half of the season, when they won the final four games, they were averaging 180 yards on the ground. First five games, all losses, only 116 yards on the ground. That's a big discrepancy. Uh, and then lastly, they need to convert on opportunities. One of ten on red zone field goals last year is not going to cut it uh, in a season where they're looking to compete for the NESCAC title. Opportunities like that need to be converted. Nine red zone field goals missed last season can't happen again. That's right, Jared. And a lot of those games that the Jumbos narrowly lost were very close, falling between one and three points. Of course, Bates able to extend their lead at the end of that game, and Trinity keeping their foot on the gas pedal throughout the entirety of the, their first meeting. But the Jumbos able to win their last four, led by Berluti. What does Trinity need to do to stymie the Jumbos already increasing here momentum as they have already come out of the tunnel and look fired up for game one. Yeah, Jumbos have a lot of momentum, but we know Trinity, they are a powerhouse in the NESCAC. They are successful year in and year out. Uh, for them, they need to look for offensive production outside of their number one guy, Devontae Reed. We know he can do it. Top five in the NESCAC in receiving yards last year, but they lost other guys around him, and he's really the one proven guy on that offense. If they can find consistent production outside of him, that'll make life a lot easier on offense. Switching to defense, they were simply probably the best defensive team in the NESCAC last year. First in yards against on both the pass side and the rush side. If they can continue that defensive consistency this year, it'll be a continuation of what made them a great football team in the last several years, especially last year. And lastly, they need to lean on experience. They returned 18 of 22 starters from a team that went 8-1 and one last year, one game away from a NESCAC title. Those guys are the guys that step up. They lead teams. They win you games. If those guys come through like they have before, they lean on them, it should be uh, a good scenario for the Bantams. That's right, Jared. The Bantams coming in here with a lot of momentum as well. Of course, they went 8-1 and one last season as the captains are out there at midfield for the coin toss. Before this season and earlier this week, we were able to catch up with a couple of Jumbo players. One of those being OJ Armstrong, who's back for his sixth year in a Tufts uniform. OJ had a couple of nice things to say about the program. Jumbo means the world to me, honestly. I wouldn't be back if I didn't love it. I just like the culture, the coaching staff, team support. All the brothers welcome me in. I'm excited to be back. So far, my favorite part about the season has been just coming out here every day and working as hard as possible. You know, not everyone gets a sixth year, but I'm excited that I got the opportunity. I've been put into a different role this year. Um, I'm looking to embrace that role and give my best effort. Shumbos means the world to me, honestly. I wouldn't be back if I didn't love it. I just like the culture, the coaching staff, team support. All the brothers welcome me in. I'm excited to be back. So far, my favorite part about the season has been just coming out here every day and working as hard as possible. You know, not everyone gets a sixth year, but I'm excited that I got the opportunity. I've been put into a different role this year. Um, I'm looking to embrace that role and give my best effort. Jerry, we're really glad that OJ Armstrong is back. Of course, taking on a new role and a sixth year, definitely a leader for this Jumbo squad. Jumbo's also won the opening coin toss and they decided to defer, so Trinity will receive the kickoff. Both teams now out on the field, breaking their initial huddle. Jared, what are you most excited for here? Of course, a beautiful atmosphere on an even more beautiful day as the anthem's about to come. 
I'm excited to see a second season from quarterback Michael Berluti on the Jumbos. He came in as a true freshman last year, wasn't expected to start, uh, but made an impact anyways. Love to see what he can do entering his second season. And Jared, now that the national anthem's all wrapped up, Dom Haley running out onto the field before they break the huddle for the Jumbos. Haley, a returning senior, a star on special teams and on that defensive line last year. What do the Jumbos need to do here early to stop the experience from the quarterback, Spencer Fetter, a first-team All-NESCAC selection last year, and coming back, of course, only with Devontae Reed as a primary target. But Devontae Reed, a captain for the Bantams, this is obviously someone that they trust as well. Well, I mentioned this a little bit in the keys to the game, but their jumbos are going to really look to shut down Devontae Reed, at least make him uncomfortable, and force uh, the Bantams to find someone other than him on offense. There are guys behind him that they're confident in, but we haven't seen them before, right? Uh, we have not seen them produce at the NESCAC level. Um, specifically, uh, we've got Matthew Laughlin. He's going to be a sophomore this year. They're looking for him to fill some of the production they lost from the graduating seniors last year. Uh, of course, they're confident in that. If they can get that done, you know, it looks good for the Bantams, but the Jumbos, they want to force them to have to feed those guys. Walsh to kick off for the Jumbos with a couple of Bantams set back deep. And here's the opening kick from Walsh, and we're underway here at Harold O. Zimmon Field. Fair catch there from the Bantams, and they'll take this one out to the 25. This is, of course, fair caught within the 10 college rules. They'll take that one at the 25. First possession of the game, uh, looking as the Jumbos chose to defer, showing some confidence in their defense to start the game. New defensive coordinator, Justin Manning, uh, entering his first year for the Jumbos, coming from Duke. Division One program. He really came in and reshaped this defense. Uh, a lot of graduating seniors from last year. There's some experience there, but it's a new look, uh, and they're very confident that this can be a uh, different season than last year. More confident, better production from the defensive line and the secondary, and put some pressure on a very, very confident offense from the Bantams. It looks like the Jumbos are only lining up with three of their big linemen. Have a couple of linebackers in there as well. OJ Armstrong notably on the defensive side of the ball today. Now Fetter in the backfield, man in motion. He takes the snap. Good pressure immediately, but connects downfield to his man Thomas Walsh. First play of the game, a little seam shot to the tight end. Gap in the zone right there. Makes a good, strong throw. High point catch from Walsh. Uh, interesting to see, as I said, looking to the tight end on the first play. Wasn't hugely involved. Only eight receptions all of last season. Three of those were for touchdowns. On the first play of the year, gets them off to a good start. That's right, Jared Walsh, a six foot three, 235 senior from Pelham, New York. Jumbo linebackers, none of them standing taller than six foot, six feet tall. So could look to exploit that matchup. Fetter now in the backfield with one behind him. He takes the snap, hands it off to his man Kirby, and Kirby breaks it free. 
Kirby still going. Second play of the game, and Will Kirby with a 53-yard touchdown. Trinity Bantams opening up with an early lead here. Not the start you were looking for for the Jumbos. As you mentioned, three men on the line, not a lot of pressure, huge hole for Kirby to run through, and once he got past that first line, uh, he was gone. Yeah. Big play to start the game from the Bantams. Yeah, Don't know what else to say. Yeah, Jared, the Bantams returning many of the men on their offensive line, led by the captain, Kyle Woodring, a 280-pound senior. So offensive line clearly with some experience and opening up a nice hole. Will Kirby hit it hard and took it to the house. Trinity looking to add one with an extra point here. Looks like it's going to be the sophomore, Matt Jooms. In Franklin, Massachusetts. Up and good from Jooms. And two plays, not the start that you would have wanted from the Jumbos. Jared, what are we looking for here? Well, you know, a real lesson in football, it's not how you get hit, it's how you respond. So, obviously not an ideal start for the Jumbos, but they came into this season uh, with a lot more confidence than they've had in the past. They have the momentum coming out of last season. The offense... They don't, they don't care what happened on the defensive end. They're coming out. They're executing their game plan. Uh, and if they can do what they want, even up the game, uh, we can forget all about the three-play three first drive for the Bantams. Yeah, Jared, and it would be a good time to remind you that this, start, this game started exactly the opposite way last year. The Jumbos connecting for a long touchdown. Trinity, of course, hitting that hole hard for a touchdown very early on here. But Jumbos now have a chance to respond and... Of course, only down 7 nothing. still a one-score game, and very early, only 46 seconds off the clock. So the Jumbos now getting ready to receive the kickoff. Andre Smith set back deep. And Smith generated a lot of chunk plays on special teams last year for the Jumbos, set them up in good positions often when they really, really needed it to try to get back in games just like right now. This one's in the end zone. Smith's going to let it bounce, and he'll take the touchback for Tufts. Now the Jumbo offense getting ready to march out onto that field. Michael Berluti, the sophomore, leading them out there from Westwood, Massachusetts. Last year completed 62% of his passes. The offense is going to talk it over just a little bit more as that play clock runs down at about 20 seconds now. They reset it, though, so Jumbo offense headed out on the field. It's going to be Berluti next to him, Tyler Johnson, the running back. Four wide receivers set for the Jumbos. Berluti takes the snap. Looks over the middle, but a wobbly pass intended for Phil Lutz. Incomplete. Looking to set up the intermediate passing game on the first play. We saw that a lot from this offense last year. When Berluti gets into a rhythm with these quick hitting throws, that's often how they string together a successful drive. So interesting to see him start out very similar to last year. Yeah, it looked like he had Tyler Johnson pretty wide open over there. Could have taken the easy option on the wheel route. Hands off to Johnson on this play. Johnson tackled from behind. And we're going to be seeing Johnson really pick up the majority of the rushing opportunities for the Jumbos last year. Uh, this year, last year, uh, split a little with the senior Mike Padrini. Uh, he graduated, and now it's really Johnson's role, uh, you know, to produce him. Third and six for the Jumbos. They were 43 percent on third downs last year, looking to start something early on offense. Berluti with Johnson right next to him. Another four receiver set. Drops back, finds Johnson. He breaks a tackle, but it looks like he'll be short. Pass is for Tyler Johnson. Looks like it's going to be fourth and four on the Jumbo 31. And out comes the punting unit for Tufts. So a quick three and out for the Jumbos. Not the way they wanted to respond. Looking to let Tyler Johnson make a play in space. They did that a lot last year. He makes guys miss not to be on that one. And now they're going to have to really see the defense step up and prevent this from becoming a, a two-score lead in the first quarter. And the versatile Michael Berluti back to punt for Tuft. Set deep for the Bantams. And, and a 
Snap through the end zone. Berluti falls on it. Goes through the back of the end zone. And it's going to be a safety. So a bad snap and a safety for Trinity. Looks like they're going to be punting once again. And a couple of miscues early for the Jumbos. Jared, how do they get back on their feet? Uh, it's sloppy football so far. First quarter, first half of the game. Snap over your quarterback who's punting his head. You know, you really can't be making these mistakes this early in the season. I think they just need to regroup, really get back on the field on defense. They're going to need to put pressure and start really grinding to get back in this game, not how they wanted to start their season off. That's right, Jared. Jumbo's struggling here early. And uh, got a, a little stoppage of play. Trinity, of course, leading 9 to nothing. That strong first drive and the early touchdown from Will Kirby. A couple things I've noticed so far. Uh, obviously, right there you had Berluti as the main punter. Could be, you know, a way to confuse the defense. We know he can punt. He's got a leg, uh, but, you know, option to throw, obviously. He's the starting quarterback when he's back there punting. Also, on the defensive side, O.J. Armstrong slotted it immediately. Uh, looked like the number one corner out there on the outside. This is his first year on defense. Previously was a wide receiver, but they clearly trust him a lot. Uh, didn't really get any opportunities. Didn't get thrown out on the first drive, but it will be interesting to see how he holds up there, slotting in first year on defense as a starting quarterback. Yeah, Jared, not a whole lot to talk about. Of course, a lot of Trinity momentum here. There's the long kick. They'll receive it. He's going and taken down by the Jumbos at the 35. There's Tyler DiNapoli, the freshman, on the return. And now this strong Trinity offensive unit set to come back out. Jumbo defense looking to get back up on their feet. And I think on this drive and the drives going forward, I think what we need to look out for, if the Jumbos continue to only rush three guys on the line, those three guys need to be able to generate some push. If they can't uh, make their way into the backfield, it's going to be hard for the Tufts defense to hold up against an offense that can really attack you at all three levels. Yeah, Jared, Berluti got the ball, or excuse me, Fetter got the ball out pretty quickly on that first seam route. We'll see what the Bantams decide to do here. It's Coach Jeff Devaney in his 17th season with the Bantams. He's had a good amount of success, 104 wins in those 17 seasons. Looking for 105 today. Fetter in the backfield with Kirby behind him. Kirby now next to him. Fetter takes a snap, looks for the quick pass on the slant, and it's caught by Devontae Reed. And there's his man, the number one receiver on this team, Devontae Reed. Little quick slant route, puts that ball right on the inside uh, where no one else can get to it. Those type of plays, Jumbos would be liking to pick those up on offense. It's those quick hitters that really get an offense in rhythm. Yeah, and a first down for Trinity. They're already moving the ball really well. It's only been three plays, but Jumbos looking pretty flat on defense already. Fetter now. Kirby next to him. He takes the snap, fakes the handoff, another quick slant, and Devontae Reed's got another gain of about 10. Go back to the same play again. They motion him to the left, uh, and they run pretty much the exact same play. Little play action, find him on the inside. The defense is just not, you know, there in the middle of the field. Linebackers not playing in coverage right there, beat him in man-to-man. -man. They're going to continue to pick up chunk yards on first down. That's how you get ahead in football games. Now Fetter set back. Kirby behind him. Fetter takes a snap. It looks like it's going to be a free play. Two flags at the line, but Kirby dropped behind the line of scrimmage. Little confusion on 
what the flag was, but seems like it is going to be an offside. So first and five now. Looks like a number switch as well. No number 93 on the Tufts roster, but it seems to be Javier Rios, the junior from Massachusetts. Now Fetter in the backfield, takes the snap. Little bit of pressure, Fetter looking to do it with his feet. He slides down. And a good job by the Jumbos to lay up and not hit him hard. Sliding feet first, it's gonna be second and about four. Fetter on the rush, gains about one. Yeah, first offensive play for the Bantams where, where uh, Fetter looked up and really didn't see anybody wide open. You saw Armstrong on the outside, really good coverage, keeping his man to the sideline. And Fetter, uh, not the dual threat quarterback that some other guys in NESCAC like Berluti are. He's smart to get down there, second down and short. Fetter, the prolific passer, leading this Bantam offense. Didn't see much, and of course the Jumbo's got a little pressure. You have to slide up in that pocket and make the decision to run. Better now in the backfield. Kirby next to him. Man in motion. That's Reed. Looks like the play is called dead. Could be a delay of game here. Maybe a timeout called by Trinity to save them at the bell. They do call the delay of game. So it's going to be second and 10 here for the Bantams. Trinity surprisingly not as disciplined a team as you'd expect. Averaging last season just under six penalties a game for 57 yards. I believe that's worst in the NESCAC in terms of penalties. So there's five yards there in the opposite direction for them. Fetter now at midfield, takes the snap. Hands it off to Kirby and tackled in the backfield. Well done by the Jumbos to penetrate that line. Tackle is made there by number 97. That's Michael Butler getting through. Yeah, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. If you're not, you know, rushing four guys in the line, you need to get push immediately, and that's what Michael Butler did. He broke through uh, the, the offensive line. Good, strong tackle, and now a huge third and long for the Bantams. Tufts wants to stand strong right here. Yeah, huge third and long here for the Jumbos. Could be a momentum-shifting set of downs here. Fetter in the backfield. Devontae Reed in motion. Fetter takes the snap. Jumbos rush the house. Fetter gets it off. Finds his man on the sideline. That's number 82, Sean Clapp. OJ Armstrong trying to rip that ball out, unable to do so, and Clapp is down at the two. Really nice pass by Spencer Fetter. Poised in the pocket and connects with Clapp on the sideline. Yeah, Fetter has been on the money so far. That is an incredibly accurate throw down the sideline. Armstrong got beat by step and a half right there. And he also, had Devontae Reed looked open over the middle of the field too. The tough secondary is not holding up to these quick receivers from the Bantams. Fetter hands it off. And brought down is Will Kirby. Looks like a gain of none. It's going to be second and three, or second and goal, excuse me, at the jumbo three. And when you sacrifice some pressure on the line to put more guys in the secondary, which the Jumbos have been doing, you really need those guys to step up on third and long and prevent the defense, the offense from getting behind them. Unfortunately, they have not been able to do that so far. Yeah, Jared, one interesting thing here is Trinity's opted for the longer type of pass, and it seems like they're running out of room there in the Jumbo red zone. Fetter now back with Kirby to his left. Couple of wide receivers set wide. Devontae Reed in motion. Fetter. Hands it off to him. Reed looking for something. Looks like he's stood up, but gets it in for the touchdown. Trinity putting another six on the board. They lead early 15 to nothing with 8.05 left to go in the first quarter. Simply put, not a lot of resistance from the Tufts defense so far. Uh, the Bantams have been putting Devontae Reed in motion a lot. They like to move him around. You don't really know what they're going to do with him on any given play. On that one, a little toss to him, and he's a shiftier guy. He's a guy you want with the ball in your hands. Can't stop him on the goal line. And the extra point is up and good. Trinity leads 16 to nothing here. And it uh, seems like they are starting just where they left off last season. Jumbos unable to get anything going on offense, going three and out. And the defense had a promising start to that drive there. But, of course, Spencer Fetter breaking them down once again, connecting with Sean Clapp on that near sideline. Trinity leads 16 to nothing here in the first quarter. The Jumbos looking to answer. Yeah, and the Bantams, they've been doing what I said they needed to do. 
Uh, obviously, Devontae Reed has gotten involved, a couple catches and that uh, little toss for the touchdown. But on big plays, they've been looking elsewhere. Sean Clapp, not a guy who was really involved last year. Uh, big play to convert a third down on that possession. If they can continue to spread the ball around, uh, the Jumbos are going to have a hard time stopping them. We've seen that so far. Right now, if you're the Jumbos, you know, we can say this every time, but they really need to get some momentum going on offense. Another three and out just puts them in a bad situation. Don't want to have to be digging yourself out of huge holes time and time again. It's going to be Hampton Trout to kick off for the Bantams with Andre Smith in the end zone for the Jumbos once again. Kick is off. Smith has it. He's going to take this one out. He gets almost brought down, but he's still going. Andre Smith makes another man miss. Looking to send this one upfield and tackled from behind at the 20. 7.53 left to go here in the first quarter. Wise of Andre Smith to try to make something happen on special teams because there wasn't much going on offense, but the jumbo offense headed back once again, led by Michael Berluti. Smith, really a dynamic player. We've seen that time and time again. Every time he really has the ball in his hands on special teams, he tries to make something happen. I'd be interested to see if he gets more involved on offense this year. He's really the number two running back, it looks like, but he's a guy you want with the ball in his hands. Now Berluti set back with Johnson to his left. Man in motion, that's Lutz. Now one given to Tyler Johnson. He looks to go upfield, gain of one or two. Not much going there. Not a ton of push from that offensive line. Returning four starters in Nick Swift, Kieran Horahan, Blair Horning, and Travis Sipalia. Tyler Johnson taking a rush again. And looks like Coach Savetti had your game plan too. Ground and pound, but not much going there for Tyler Johnson. Yeah, early in the game, trying to really establish the inside run with Johnson hasn't been incredibly successful so far. For me, something I look for when the Jumbos go down in games and they need to pick up chunk plays and the offense isn't going, you look for Berluti on the ground. He can make up chunk plays, whether it's a designed run or a pass where he, you know, breaks out of the pocket. He can pick up some of those yards when the offense is really struggling. Now Berluti with Johnson to his left. Looking out for Jaden Richardson, who makes the catch. He's brought down. Was he inbounds? Looks like he was. It's going to be a jumbo first down, their first of the season. They'll move the chains. Looks like the jumbos have something going on offense. That clock will run since we're still in the first quarter. Yeah, first, first down. That was close, but another staple of this tough offense, the quick out. Uh, they went to that time and time again last year. Really, all three of their top receivers, all four of their top receivers are guys that Berluti really trusts. And so he, again, looks to get in rhythm in that quick passing game and, and go from there. Yeah, and a nice athletic catch there from Richardson. Berluti now takes the snap, flips it to Johnson. Johnson! Hits the hit stick and runs over a Trinity defender. Really big hit there from Tyler Johnson. Hitting Hunter Tully. That looks like a gain of about five. And we've seen that from him before. He really lowers his shoulder on that. Puts his body through a defender. He's a guy that you want with the ball in space. I think they should look to get him the ball on the outside more. The inside run has not been incredibly effective. When they get him on pitches, on power options like that, he can really make a difference. He had a couple touchdowns last year on, you know, little swing routes to the flat. You give him the ball, all he has to do is make a defender miss. Now Berluti in the backfield, Johnson to his right. They hand it off to him. Johnson looking to send it upfield. And a tackle there. Kevin Clark on the stop. Kevin Clark, another returning defensive player. Got a couple of substitutions here for the Jumbos. Johnson's going to take a rest here on this third down. Looks like Phil Lutz is in the backfield, but he'll split out wide. A lot of men on the line for the Bantams. They want to pressure the quarterback right here. Jackson Butler in at quarterback for the Jumbos. He's going to run it. Really nice run there from Jackson Butler. Traditionally a wide receiver, but Berluti comes out. Jackson Butler stays in. Looks like Jackson Butler is going to stay in the game at quarterback for the Jumbos. Berluti started running out there, but Coach Savetti said, hey, man, hang out. Butler taking another snap, running the same exact play, trying to run it upfield, and doesn't work as well. Butler taken down at the line of scrimmage. But another Jumbo first down. A lot of things happening quickly 
And Coach Savetti showing a lot of different looks to try to get something going here. Yeah, I mean, play calling has been pretty conservative so far. A lot of inside runs and quick passes, but a little wildcat action right there. You get the receiver in, and you just need to find a lane for him, right? He's going to take a step back and, and look for a hole. He did that, you know, tried to run it a second time with a little less success, but clearly a willingness to experiment here uh, if it means, you know, picking up yards. And Berluti, the nice pass there to Jaden Richardson, running that quick out once again. It's going to be third and five for the Jumbos. But they've gotten this one over midfield, and finally something going here on offense. Just about 30 yards on this drive so far, and really ticking away at that clock. And, you know, as I said, obviously the quick out is a staple of any offensive playbook, but we've seen that the Jumbos offense specifically, they really like to use that to pick up easy yards. They can go to any receiver on that route. There were games where they threw that to Phil Lutz six, seven times last season. Now Berluti takes a snap. He's got plenty of time. Threw a strike downfield, but defensed by two in the secondary there. Well done by the... Bantam's defense intended for Phil Lutz and Berluti. Unable to connect with Lutz still. And uh, he's back to punt once again. Jumbo is sent away empty-handed after a little bit of momentum on that drive. Yeah, first real shot downfield the Jumbos have taken. Looking for his number one guy, Phil Lutz, in double coverage. Made a competitive throw there, but a little behind him. And it got knocked away. Can the special teams unit, you know, come through right here? And Berluti takes it. Fair catch. And he's going to fair catch this at the five. Really great punt there from Michael Berluti at midfield. That's 45 yards from him. So doing his job, let's see if the Jumbos can stop this Bantams offense. They've been on fire so far in this game. Two touchdowns early. Not really much more that you can ask from them. Yeah, and that was a mighty impressive punt right there. I think sometimes, you know, you hesitate to put, you know, your starting quarterback out there at another position for fear he might get injured, whatever. But clearly when you have a quarterback who can punt like that, uh, you want to use his talents to the best you can. That was a very impressive punt from the starting quarterback, Berluti. And now again, still 16-0. to A lot more interesting field position on this drive from the Bantams. Tufts were in, was in the situation a lot last year, and they didn't always get the best uh, on defense. Now Fetter in his own end zone takes the snap. They're going to run this. Kirby hits the hole hard but tripped up at the line. Looks like it's going to be a gain of about four or five. Nice carry there. And an even better tackle, though, from Cam O'Brien, a returning safety for this Jumbos unit. Gain of six. Fetter in the backfield. Hands it off to Kirby. Stopped at the line by the Jumbos. Looks like a gain of one or two. Bantam's running deep in their own end zone. Couple of substitution. Michael Butler comes in. There's a tackle from Haley. Now Fetter in the backfield once again. Kirby next to him. And a false start that's going to back him up a couple yards. So some penalties early for the Bantam so far hasn't really come back to hurt them at all. But facing a third down here, you know, third and one to third and six, that is a difference in terms of play calling. Uh, and the Jumbos right now, this is where you really need to step up. They're probably rushing three again. Uh, and the secondary needs to make a play if it is a pass. Better five of five already today. He's got 89 yards on the in the air. We'll see what Trinity goes to here. And Armstrong out wide matched up with Devontae Reed, but a timeout called. Yeah, timeout Trinity. They're going to want to talk this one over. Of course, pinned pretty deep. Puts a little bit of pressure on your special teams unit if, uh, if this one doesn't work out for them. But 5-5, five of five, a ton of offensive momentum still, even after that false start. I'd expect a quick slant here, maybe look for Devontae Reed again, maybe look over the middle or in the seam to one of your tight ends. But yeah. Trinity just been really successful so far. Yeah, Jumbos haven't really been playing any like deep safety so far, and it's been giving the Bantams a lot of room to throw over top with uh, with really no help for the corners, especially O.J. Armstrong. This is the second time out the Bantams have taken in the first half just to talk things over. They have a very, very experienced coaching staff. Their head coach, Jeff Devaney, is entering his 17th season. Their associate head coach is in his 18th season, and their offensive coordinator, Mark Malinsky, is in his 17th season. So these are guys who have been in this program for a long time. They've had a lot of success year in and year out, and they're prepared for situations like this. So you come out 
out, uh, and you know that they're they're really uh, they're putting their best foot forward in terms of play calling. That's right, Jared, and of course a lot of experience on the offensive side of the ball as well. This is Spencer Fetter's fourth season, first team All NESCAC last year. One of the elite quarterbacks in this league, Will Kirby, one of the elite running backs as well. He was a he was a NESCAC All League selection. Better with Kirby to his right. Takes the snap. Looking over the middle. Nothing doing there. Looking to do it with his feet now. Finds the edge. He's got the first down easy. Runs out of bounds. Looked like a little bit of a broken play there at the start, but, you know, stays with his eyes upfield, rolls out, and picks up the first down. A little miscommunication on the Tufts defense. Looked like it was Jonathan O'Neill didn't really see. You know, he just back turned to the quarterback, did not see him rolling out. Maybe he couldn't have beaten there anyways. But, uh, you know, yeah, not a huge dual threat quarterback uh, is Fetter. But still, if you give him the opportunity, he's going to take an easy first down. Yeah, Jumbo's not doing a good enough job keeping contain, and Fetter bounces it to the outside. And that's another repercussion, only rushing three. Hard to contain the quarterback. Jumbo sent four this time. Fetter looking out wide. And it's going to be a pass interference. OJ Armstrong grabbing at jerseys. Coach Savetti trying to ask the official what's going on, but pass intended for Dabner Teacher. And it's going to be a pass interference. And that's Maybe a hold. Smart quarterback play right there um, from Fetter. Maybe not a ball that was catchable, but he threw it in the direction knowing there was contact right there. That's how you get a call on a play like that. Armstrong, mixed results so far in his first game at corner. That's right, Jared. And even though Armstrong's been on this team a while, this is his first real look on the defensive side of the ball, usually lining up with offense. But the Jumbos have a really talented receiver core, so Armstrong moving over to defense, one of the more versatile athletes on this Jumbo roster. Yeah, just like he's an athlete, plain and simple. He was an athlete at wide receiver. He'll be an athlete at corner. Uh, it's all about, you know, just picking up the position and making plays. They clearly trust him, uh, and he's out there on their number one receiver, uh, Devontae Reed, and he'll continue to get better as the season goes on. Very early right here, Jumbo defense looking to step up. Armstrong lined up against Reed with Fetter in the backfield. Kirby set to his left. Fetter takes the snap, hands off to Kirby, looking for a hole. Taken down at the line, but looks like it's going to be a gain of two. Jumped forward for a couple of yards. Good tackle there from Matty Drouillard. Another returning graduate student for the Jumbos. He's the type of guy that they know can make a play. They stack the box right there. They rush for. That's more of a traditional look against the run. Uh, if they can continue to really, you know, take take what the offense is giving you. People say take what the defense is giving you. But if they're going to run the ball up the middle, rush for. Don't rush three, you know. Make the plays that the offense is allowing you to make. Fetter set back Kirby to his left. Fakes the handoff, drops back. A lot of time and a wide open Devontae Reed down the sideline. He's taken down at about the Jumbo 43, excuse me, Jumbo 38. And the tackle from Victor Garza on the blown coverage. Wide open was Devontae Reed. Another big play for Trinity. Yeah, he just completely shook his man and ended up wide open down the left sideline. Another blown coverage for the Jumbos. Fetter now. And he's taken down in the backfield. Was there, there's a sack for Michael Butler. That's his second tackle for a loss in this game. And Fetter upset with his personnel. Michael Butler just beat his man on the outside. So far, he's been really the source of consistent pressure for the Jumbo so far. Really the only guy who's gotten through. They need plays like that. They need negative yards for the Bantams offense if they're going to fight their way back into this game. At about a 14-second difference between the play clock and the game clock, Fetter in the backfield. Looks like there's going to be one more play in this first quarter. Fetter takes a snap, hands it off to Kirby. Kirby brings it back to the original line of scrimmage. It's going to be third and nine for Trinity. Kirby really, really good at just shooting through the hole. He finds lanes and puts his head down and picks up yards. You're an offensive uh, football team. Really, you need to pick up yards on early downs. That's how you get ahead in games, and he has consistently managed to churn out uh, positive yards. 
So after the first quarter, the Jumbos trail the Trinity Bantams 16-0. to zero. Jared, before today's game, we also had an opportunity to catch up with one of the Jumbo star receivers who has been largely quiet in this game. But we spoke with Phil Lutz, and uh, Phil had a couple of nice things to say about this Jumbo program as well. Ending on such a, like a high note with the guys, um, of course, everyone's morale is up going into the offseason, and it carries over for sure. Uh, we had a great camp, and we're looking forward to keeping that going. I think we have a great culture here. Um, we recruit guys based off not only athletic ability, but also personality, and uh, that's something that I take like, I think it's very important. And I found some of my best friends that I've ever met on this team. Um, athletically, I think us as a team, we have as good of a chance as anybody to win it. So I think staying out of our heads and um, just doing what we can. Yeah. So ending on such a, like a high note with the guys. Um. We're really happy that Phil Lutz is back with the Jumbos. He had a historic year last year, breaking the Jumbo receiving record, catching over 1,000 yards worth in passes. And, uh, of course, not on the field just yet. The Jumbo defense still trying to stop the Trinity Bantams as they're now on the other end of the field. It's going to be third and nine on the Jumbo 35. Set back is Fetter with Kirby to his right. Looks like they have four wide receivers. Fetter looking for his tight end down the seam, but throws it behind him and unable to make the catch is Thomas Walsh. Walsh cashing that first pass down the seam the first time. But it looks like Trinity may be going for it here. Fetter remains on the field with Will Kirby as, as well. Bantams last year, 7 of 17 on fourth down, and they've got a long one here, fourth and nine. A little strange to be punting and a little bit out of the range of your kicker, so probably a smart move from Coach Jeff, Jeff Devaney. Yeah, a little bit of an in-between distance on that play. You know, Walsh couldn't get his head around in time, but again, they're looking for him down the seam. That's a classic tight uh, right route for the tight end. They have, they've, they've shown a confidence to use any of their weapons on offense so far. Fourth down to nine, anything goes. Fetter takes the snap. What can I do with his feet now? Sending two more jumbos. Looks down the field and a really great play there over the middle from the jumbos. Looks like that's Shane Reiner in coverage. Excellent job on the defense for Tufts. Yeah, big stand right there. An interesting fourth down decision from the Bantams. I think, yeah, as you said, they figured uh, no loss if they go for it and don't get it. They don't really need to punt. They wanted to put the game away early, try to go up 24-0, 23-0. But stand by the Jumbos now gives them decent starting field position and, again, a chance to really put some points on the board, get back in this game, but really establish momentum more than anything. Maybe look for your guy, Phil Lutz. That was Comerford on the deflection. Johnson now looking to make something happen out of the backfield. Looks like he gets taken down for a loss. Maybe back straight to the line of scrimmage, though. It's going to be second and ten. Jumbo's still trying to ground and pound. Yeah, a little different philosophically from last year uh, that they're, they are continuing to try to press the run. They're not giving that up so quickly and trying to pass their way out of this deficit. And I think that, you know, that is a positive difference from last year. If they can get some success on the ground, it'll get them back into the game. But at some point, you do need to start looking to take shots downfield. Now Berluti back for the Jumbos. One man in motion. Berluti takes the snap, looking deep for Phil Lutz. But another incomplete pass to him. That's his third target, and still silent is Phil Lutz. It's going to be third and ten for the Jumbos. I'd say aside from the Wildcat couple play calls, the offensive play calling has been uh, a little less than creative so far. A lot of quick outs, a lot of runs up the middle. And at some point, you got to open up that playbook. Down 16-0. You can't dink and dunk your way out of that one, especially if the defense is generating a lot of pressure, not only on the defensive line, but they're up and they're pressing those wide receivers. They, they're prepared for these quick outs. Take advantage. Go over the top. Now Berluti, with Johnson to his left, takes the snap. Berluti with some pressure, can do it with his feet here. He's got a, a ways to go. Nice move, but taken down by the Trinity defense and a gain of about six for Michael Berluti. Runs out of bounds. Just under 14 minutes left to go here in this first half. And Casa Grande, the graduates returning player for the Trinity Bantams. 46 tackles last year. 
one of this team's leaders and Berluti now back to punt. And obviously not the start the Jumbos were looking for, but really the offense has just not been in sync. Last year the passing offense was prolific. They were up there towards the top as the snap goes over the head yet again. And Berluti takes a tough hit at the end of that one. Punished there at his own five-yard line. But the second snap over the head of the punter, Berluti. And uh, another miscue for the Jumbos. Gives a short field for the Bantams. Yeah, hard to watch right now. That's two snaps over the head of the punter in the first half here of game one. We really were looking for a clean game from this Jumbos team. Mistake-free football is what wins you games. But so far, that has not been the case for the Jumbos. Going to be really tough to dig out of this one, giving the ball right back to the Bantams in the red zone. Coming out once again, it's going to be Spencer Fetter. Will Kirby in the backfield as well, both previously all NESCAC selections. Fetter takes the snap, hands it off to Kirby, who's taken down in the backfield. Jumbo's getting some pressure. Really well done there. And it looks like someone is down for the Bantams. Looks like it's Devontae Reed may have slipped an ankle, but he's up and walking back to his sideline. but Will Kirby on the rush, tackled by Tyler Roach. Second and goal on the seven yard line. Fetter with Kirby to his right. Play clock running down. Fetter hands it off to Kirby. He's trying to hit the hole, but he stood up at the line of scrimmage. Well done by the Jumbos to stand their ground there. It's going to be third down for the Bantams. That's great tackling right there from the Jumbos. Stays low and pretty much stops Kirby in his tracks. He looked like he was gaining some speed trying to hit that hole. The defensive line has really started stepping up their play uh, over the last couple possessions. Trying to keep the, uh, the Bantams from scoring a touchdown here. Keep them to only three points. Maybe 19-0. Fetter with Kirby to his left here. Couple of wide receivers set out wide. Fetter takes the snap, looking to pass immediately. And well defensed by the Jumbos. Really good job there in the end zone by number 22. That's Victor Garza. Yeah, I was going to say, look for the matchups on the outside. They had Clapp split out wide to the left, and they had Reed split out wide to the right. Those guys both can go up and make a play. Clapp is 6'4". I thought they might look his way. Instead, they look for their number one target, Reed. But really great pass breakup right there. Kept his eyes, you know, not turned away. Didn't put his hands on the receiver and broke it up cleanly at the point of attack. That is the type of defense you like to see from the Jumbos. And it's going to be Matt Jumis for the Bantams. That one's up, and it's good. So another three on the board for the Bantams. They lead 19 to nothing here in the first half. Still 12 minutes left to go in this first half, and the Jumbos remain scoreless. We'll say it every single time they get the ball back and they haven't scored yet. This is the possession they need to make a difference on. At some point, they got to start taking shots downfield, open up the playbook, and really try to get back in this game. Right now, it is not going in their direction. Yes, they deferred. Yes, they will get the ball at the half, but they need to start capitalizing on their possession. So far, they have not done anything. That's right, and Coach Savetti, who usually runs a pretty pass-heavy offense, has not really had a ton of success throwing the ball. I don't believe Berluti has very many completions in this one. He's three of five, two catches for Richardson and one for Tyler Johnson. Only 11 yards in the air for the Jumbos. And this is an offense that's pretty much completely returned from last year. They have the same quarterback, same top three receivers, same running back, but just not on the same page so far. It's not like it's a new group that really needs to recalibrate. They know each other. They know their strengths. So hopefully they can start playing into those strengths and get back into this game. That's right, Jared. And now five points that Trinity has scored off of those bad snaps. So 
five points can be the difference in the game. Of course, many of the ultimate decision-making points margins last year were between three and five, so those five points could make a difference here. Jumbos are going to take this one out of the end zone. Gets out to about the 18. Yeah, maybe not the wisest choice to take it out right there, but the Jumbos, again, they trust Smith. Uh, and they know that he's going to give them the opportunity to make a play on any given return. So can't be mad about that one. And now is when Berluti needs to come out and really lead this offense down the field. Still a great environment here at Harold O. Zinman Field. As Berluti out on the field with this jumbo unit once again, Tyler Johnson set to his left. Three receiver set. And a lot of pressure. Johnson hit at the line. No gain on the first play. Offensive line is simply just not generating any push on these zone runs. Uh, I think really look to get Berluti involved on the ground. Some of these turn into a little bit of an option play, and those are the plays that have generated them chunk yards on the ground in the past. But right now, the traditional run game is simply not generating points. I don't want them to fall back in to the trap of last year where they would go down, they would stop running, they would get pass heavy. But again, you do need to start picking up plays. We can't be punting on every single possession, three and out. Now Berluti with Johnson to his left, three receive, four receiver set. He drops back. He's got plenty of time. There's the pass out wide. Ooh, and almost a great catch on the sideline by Lutz, but taken out of his hands by the experienced senior Aiden Kennedy. Yeah, he really made a play on that ball, went up and high pointed it, twisting his body towards the sideline. An accurate throw by Berluti, really broken up at the last second by Aiden Kennedy. He's a captain of this team. He's an all nest cat guy, uh, someone they trust to make plays. And of course, lining up with Lutz in this one. Definitely a strong matchup over there. Lutz still catchless. Now third and 10 for Berluti. He takes the snap. Plenty of time over the middle and a nice catch there from Phil Lutz. He's got his first, but it's knocked out from behind and Trinity's got it. Jumbo's trying to take it away once again, but receiving the... Forced fumble is Justin O'Neill Riley, the senior from Massachusetts. And looks like the Trinity offense is headed out onto the field. The officials are going to talk this one over before the Jumbos come off. Berluti stepped up and made a great throw. And, uh, you know, caught by Lutz. But he was absolutely blindsided on that fumble. It looks like they're going to take that fumble back. The officials are still chatting about it. Not exactly sure what's going on. They're the, talking the, with Coach Savetti now. The defender hit him. Uh, you know, it was a blind side hit. He, he hit him facing the goal post. Uh, you know, Lutz was not looking in his direction. It was back up the field, as you can see, uh, which, you know, on the ball, forced the fumble. He did not see that coming. I'm not sure if that is illegal under the NESCAC rules. That's Traditionally, you can't block towards your goal post. Um, but in terms of a defensive play, it looks like they are going to rule this as a completion and no fumble. That's right. They had stood up Phil Lutz. Looks like they're going to call this fumble back, and the Jumbos will retain possession. A good catch in the first catch for Phil Lutz and the Jumbos with their first first down of this drive. Michael Berluti now looking for the next play with Tyler Johnson split out next to him on his left. There's Berluti. He takes the snap, hands off to Johnson. Rather, it's a fake, and Lutz stood up once again. No catch made, and this Trinity defense is all over Phil Lutz, one of Berluti's favorite targets. They are hitting hard, and I think that really comes back to the experience of this defense. You really, it takes, it takes time on the football field. It takes time in the, in the NESCAC, in the league, to really calibrate and make plays like that. They are everywhere hitting hard and hitting with good timing, and that's disrupting the pass plays for the Jumbos. Now second and 10, Berluti takes the snap, hands it off to Johnson. Johnson. Runs for about five. He's brought down by the Trinity defense once again. Probably one of their most positive inside runs so far. That's what I mean when I mean 
pick up positive yards, getting ahead on early downs, turning second and longs and third and longs into second and two, third and two, third and four. That is really how you get ahead of the sticks and you start uh, you know, putting yourself in a better position to, to switch up your play calling. Berludi takes the snap over the middle, and there's a catch from the Jumbos. That's going to be Jackson Butler. Jackson Butler with a first down for Tufts. Now, clock running down. Still Ball. over 10 minutes left here in this first half. Ball's moving a little. A good, accurate pass over the middle of the field from Berludi and a great uh, catch from Butler bringing the ball into his body. I think now we've seen how hard this defense is hitting. They are going to you know, make a conscious effort to uh, secure the ball. No more silly mistakes from this point on. And Berludi off the field now with Butler in the Wildcat. Butler takes the snap. He's going to run it himself. Hit hard at the line. Looks like a gain of about one, but Coach Savetti going back to that Wildcat formation and has run the same play now three times. Only success on the first time. Berludi headed back out there with Johnson. So looks like something they probably game planned coming into this game. Seems to me that they're looking for the Wildcat maybe in the, uh, like some sort of replacement for those chunk yards you want to be picking up on the ground with some inside runs with Johnson. Those aren't working, so you pivot and see if Jackson Butler can do that instead. Berludi set back with Johnson to his left. Berludi takes the snap. And Berludi hit hard behind the line. It looks like a team sack there for the Bantams. That's Lucas Folan. Looked like there was a, a second guy in there. Christian Anzaveno. It's going to be a loss of six for the Jumbos. They're going to be deep third and 15. Yeah, strong pressure from the defensive line right there. Uh, multiple guys came crashing through. Berludi thought he could maneuver his way up in the pocket and step up to make a throw, but they really collapsed on him quicker than he expected uh, in a sack for the Bantams' defense. Now a third and long. Uh, obviously, it seems like a passing down. Going to have to pull something out uh, and pick up some yards here. Could be fourth down territory if they pick up like 10, 12 yards. Now Berludi... In the backfield, a lot of pressure there. Berludi looking downfield. He's going to take it with his legs. Makes a man miss. Still going, but taken down at the Trinity 45. We're going to see if Coach Savetti opts to go for it here. Still kind of a middle distance here at midfield. Again, too long for the field goal. Looks like Berludi set back deep to punt. But we'll see. Still a lot of time on that play clock, and the special teams unit comes on. And after two... Rough snaps, to say the least. Coach Savetti's going to decide to punt it once again, trusting that long snapper. Yeah, really interesting decision here. After a couple bad snaps, really, uh, they're going to have to put together a good special team sequence right here. And Berludi takes it. Really long punt. And the Jumbos are going to down that at the one. Really great punt from Michael Berludi. Can't really ask for much more from him with the leg. Now the Jumbo defense is, is going to need to stand up this Trinity offense, hoping to flip the field, and Coach Savetti's decision may pay off. Berludi's punting has probably been the best thing on the Jumbo so far today. That punt, I mean, the spin on it bounces back towards the Jumbo is exactly what you want on a punt placed within the 10-yard line. Berludi looking to make a maybe an all-Nescac special teams spot this year as the punter. Uh, silver lining for the Jumbo so far in what has been a rough first half of play. Now Fetter set back deep once again for Trinity. He takes the snap, little end around. And taken down, still within that jumbo five. Kirby so far has done a really good job of preventing negative plays. He's mostly picked up yards on every single rush. That one gets back to the line uh, near the goal line. Jumbos are rushing more than their three. Tyler DiNapoli in the game, running back, sorry, not Kirby. The freshman, Tyler DiNapoli. Now Fetter set back deep on his own five, second and ten.
And another delay of game there. It's going to be half the distance to the goal. Trinity taking a lot of time there for their snaps. General rule of thumb is that the winner of the turnover battle uh, in a football game is generally who wins the game. Obviously, Trinity winning the turnover battle so far, but if you're the Jumbos, this is a spot where you really need to generate a big play on defense and try to turn the momentum of this game. Better hands it off and tackled there behind the line of scrimmage. Really great job there from number 11 on the Jumbos. That's Jameer Alves, the defensive back. Now it's third down and 13. Loss of one on the play. So backed up real deep is Trinity here. Dinapoli remains in the game to Fetter's right. And if they're going to justify Coach Savetti's decision to punt, they need to get a stop on this play. Now Fetter, he takes the snap. Looking over the middle. A lot of time at the sideline. And it looks like it's going to be a catch on that far sideline. Really good job by Fetter to extend that play. And another catch for Trinity and a first down. Yeah, moving the sticks is Fetter. The offensive line gave him a ton of time in end zone. There was pretty much no pressure from the Tufts defense. I saw a defensive lineman on the ground. Strong, strong blocking from his offensive line. He keeps his eyes upfield and finds an open man. You give the quarterback six seconds in the pocket, he's going to find a man downfield. Fetter, once again, in the backfield. Takes the snap. Hands it off to DiNapoli. DiNapoli bouncing it to the outside. Hits the hole hard, but taken down by Timmons for the Jumbos. Again, early down yardage for the Bantams, and that decision to punt from Savetti not looking as strong at this point uh, with four minutes, 50 seconds left in the half. Unclear if the Jumbos will even get another shot to put some points on the board. They do get the ball at the half, but again, they need to start stepping up and get this offense off the field. Better takes a snap with a man in motion. Looks to the outside and hit hard by the Jumbos. That was very nearly batted up or intercepted by the Jumbos' Matty Juilliard. He read that like a book, but the ball went straight through his hands. Still a strong hit on the play uh, and a loss of yards. Third down now. Third and two now for Trinity. Fetter in the backfield. Takes the snap. Hands it off to DiNapoli. DiNapoli. Running hard. Looks like he may have a first down. The officials spot him at the first, so those chains will move once again. DiNapoli has come in the game for Will Kirby, and he is running hard just like Kirby was, shooting towards the gap and, you know, turning those legs, picking up a first down. Now Fetter in the backfield once again. DiNapoli to his right. Fetter takes the snap. A lot of Jumbos in pursuit. And an interception from the Jumbos, but it's dropped right through the hands of Lewis Timmons, who had great coverage out there. Fetter felt the pressure and kind of babied the pass out wide to Devontae Reed. Yeah, another little missed opportunity there on a strong defensive play from the Jumbos. Timmons did a great job. He, he kind of ran the route for the receiver, kept him on his outside hip. That ball did not make it to the sideline uh, where he wanted it. It was a little inside. Made a play on the ball. You know, that's a hard one to catch. If you're the Jumbos, you really need those 50-50 balls to start going your way. Um, but a, a tough break there. Now 326 here left in the first half. The Jumbos can get a stop on this set of downs. Got a shot to get the ball back. Fetter. He drops back. Plenty of time. Finds his man on the outside. Timmons pushes him out of bounds, but a lot of time in the pocket there for Spencer Fetter. He looks real comfortable. And yeah, man, he throws a real accurate ball, never really seems phased. Even when he's forced out of the pocket, he keeps his eyes upfield, and he's putting the ball so far, with a couple exceptions, on the money for his receivers right there, right on the sideline. Now Fetter in the backfield. Third and 
three for the Bantams. Fetter takes the snap. Looks short inside, and there's the interception for Lewis Timmons. The Jumbos read that one like a book, and Lewis Timmons has this one going the opposite direction. And the Jumbos putting some pressure on. Jameer Alves loving it, giving a little bit of celebration. And maybe a little bit of football karma right there. Timmons simply jumps in front of Devontae Reed. He read that play like a book. They were looking for the slant that they had gone to, I think, two or three times in the first, uh, first quarter to Reed. But Timmons, one play after dropping an interception, comes right back, reads it, and jumps in front, grabs the interception, flips this game. Two minutes, 47 seconds left in the half. Jumbos have a chance to score and get the ball back. And Michael Berluti now threatening the Bantams. Tyler Johnson bouncing this one to the outside. He's going, he's got one to beat. And a nice run there from Tyler Johnson, doing exactly as you said, Jared. Finally finding that hole, sticking with the run. And there's the first long run there for Tyler Johnson. And the Jumbos now are in the red zone on the Trinity 19. Berluti takes it. Pass. He'll take it himself. Nice little read option. He's brought down. The Jumbos have been threatening that option on nearly every run play. If you look at the play we just saw where Tyler Johnson picked up that chunk of yards, the defensive end read it as if it was a quarterback run. He stayed on Berluti. The ball was handed off. Next play, quarterback keeps it himself. They've been threatening that the whole game. It's finally starting to pay dividends. Maybe that's a little bit of the reason why they have been insisting on that inside run so far, really threatening the option. Now second and five. Johnson to the right of Berluti. Three receivers set to his left. Berluti in the backfield looking for Lutz. Bobbles it. Can't pick it up, but an incomplete pass. Trinity going after it immediately. Thought that was a backwards pass from Berluti. Yeah, a little bit of a slow developing screen right there. Bubble screen for Phil Lutz. They want to get him the ball and let him make a play. But uh, a little bobble on the hit knocks it free. Now it's third and five. You really got to pick up the first down here because you're in the red zone. Uh, almost in the red zone, but you still have down to go. You go, you get, you pick up five yards, you give a fresh four to try to get in the end zone before the end of the first half. Minute 53 seconds to go. Now third and five. If you're the Jumbos, the field goal doesn't really help a whole lot, so you're thinking this is four down territory, even though it is early. Berluti looking to take the snap. The official still standing between him and the ball. The Jumbos are going to take a timeout here. Coach Savetti wants to talk this one over on this huge third down play. Jared, if you're Coach Savetti, what are you looking at? Yeah, there are a couple directions you could go here. As you said, it's four down territory, so it would not be surprising to me if they run the ball third and five and just set up an easier opportunity, fourth and short, get yourself a fresh set of downs. Uh, the passing game has been a little hit or miss, but so has the running game so far. They could take a shot towards the end zone um, right now, but really, I think the priority is you got to get, you have two downs to pick up five yards and give yourself uh, another set of four downs to go. Uh, get in the end zone. So for me, I'd look for look short, look for the quick out, or look up the middle with Johnson, try to pick up some yards. And Jared, a lot of weapons in this bag of tricks here for Coach Savetti. So we'll see which one he decides to go with. Tyler Johnson back in the game. Berluti out on the field. Looks like Jaden Richardson set out wide with Cade Moore, Jackson Butler, and Phil Lutz. Four receivers set for the Jumbos. And Berluti looking to make it happen on third and five. 153. Haven't seen a lot of Billy Dunn so far. He's a big target guy you like to use in the red zone. Maybe see him coming in soon. He's not on the field currently. Looks like the, there's a little bit of a scoreboard mishap, so they're going to reset the scoreboard really quickly. There we go. Just D3 football things, but finally got it fixed. Well done by the team here in the booth. And now Berluti. We're going to make something happen once again. Seems like the play clock has been turned off. And they've got size on the outside in their receivers, most of them over six feet tall, so they have options here in the red zone. Johnson in motion. Berluti takes it. Wheel route for Johnson. Looking for him in the end zone. Johnson out of bounds, so it's going to be fourth and five. We'll see if the Jumbos decide to kick the field goal here or go for it. 148, and looks like the field goal unit's going to come out. 
Not a lot of success last year with the field goal unit, especially in the red zone. Only putting one of ten through the uprights. Looking to change the narrative here. So they pretty much did the opposite of what I expected. I thought less likely to take a shot towards the end zone because end it's four down territory. Apparently it is not four down territory. They take a shot, doesn't work, and now the special teams unit is on the field. The freshman Vaughn Selick puts it up. And it's through the uprights, Vaughn Selick, perfect. The freshman from Little Rock, Arkansas. And maybe a bit of a sigh of relief. Monkey off the back as the Jumbos get on the board here. Minute 43 left in the first half. I think really, you know, obviously easier said than done, but they need to just get in the halftime. They need to get to halftime, reset. They get the ball at the half. The game is not over, uh, but right now cannot afford to give up a huge chunk play with a minute 43 to go. We saw that happen several times last year. All they needed to do was get off the field, but they could not. Right here is a big moment for the defense to step up. We've been seeing some positive signs. The defensive line has been generating more pressure. Uh, and the secondary obviously stepped up interception on the last possession. So right here, you need to put it all together and make sure that they can get into the half with the score at least where it is right now. No worse. Yeah, Jared, and you can see it in the way that this offensive unit walked back over to their sidelines, tapping their helmets, kind of hanging their heads a little bit. They know that they're better than what they've displayed so far today. Of course, this Trinity defense is definitely a frustrating one to go up against. Very talented unit. And so with Pat Walsh set to kick off the defense, for the Jumbos, has just one more job here to take them into the half. Walsh, the strong kick. And a fair catch within the five, so the Bantams will get this one at the their own 25. 143 left to go in the half. Spencer Fetter leads his Trinity Bantams back out onto the field, and Will Kirby back in the game next to him. Takes the handoff. He rolls out right. Fetter. The wobbly ball. Jumbo's looking to make a play on it. Lewis Timmons again in great coverage. Devontae Reed unable to haul it in. Yeah, interesting call to take a shot downfield first down. Makes sense. Only a minute 40. They probably want to march their way down the field. Looking for his number one guy, Reed. Probably wanted to place that more on the outside shoulder because he had to come back and get that ball. Strong pass breakup. Reed wanted interference on that, but the ball you know, was placed in a, in a way where the defender was in the way already. No call right there. Now Fetter takes the snap. Free play. Fetter looking out wide and caught by number 82 for the Bantams. That's Sean Clapp. Clapp, big target on the outside. He's six foot four, and when I say back shoulder, that's what I mean. They go back to it the next play. He places that ball perfectly on the back shoulder over only the receiver can get it on the sideline. Little bobble right there, but secures it. A strong pitch and catch for the Bantams. And now 132 left to go here. The Bantams out looking across midfield. Nice catch there from Sean Clapp on that back shoulder. Fetter put in a great spot for him, and now Fetter. Penalties declined, of course, that free play. And strong awareness right there from the quarterback to look right downfield. As soon as the play started, he knew it was a free play. He took a shot, and he picked up the yards. Now Fetter takes the snap, immediately looks wide. Right over the middle of the field, that's Devontae Reed, tackled by a swarm of jumbos, or maybe a herd, and uh, Bantams now, over midfield, the jumbo 45, Fetter looking real comfortable behind that line, he takes the snap, still no pass rush, looks like that ball was tipped, but over the middle, that's Thomas Walsh with the catch, finally driven back, as the officials whistle it dead. Walsh has been a valuable target so far for Fetter. That's a great throw. Slotted that in between three or four Jumbo's defenders right in the middle of the field. Uh, they're going to take that all day. Walsh has been strong so far, giving them options uh, over the middle of the field. And now 
continuation of this hurry up offense. Only a minute left on the clock. Trinity now well within field goal range. Of course, nothing's a given. Spencer Fetter takes the snap. Going through his progression once again. Looks deep, but that one well deep and too much for Devontae Reed. Good coverage there from the Jumbos. Yeah, maybe a design shot play to the end zone right there for Reed. Uh, you know, clock stops on an incompletion. So smart play call right there, setting up second and 10 uh, on, the, on the incompletion, of course. Fetter has been accurate so far. He's 12 for 19, a touchdown and an interception. Uh, but they're looking to put some more points on the board before uh, the Jumbos get the ball at the start of the second half. Trinity looking to add a couple more points before the end of this half. Spencer Fetter in the backfield. Will Kirby to his right. Fetter takes the snap. Goes through his progression. Looking deep. Not a ton of rush, but taken down from behind. That's number 62 for the Jumbos. That's Edward Uteri. Yeah, Uteri, a veteran of this team. He was on the defensive line last year. Great job disengaging from his blocker and tackling Fetter before he could generate some room in the running game. Uh, the Jumbos did their job so far, third and ten. This is the play you need to get Trinity uh, off the field, get a stop here. It is field goal range, but it's not a gimme. And that's something the Jumbos will take at this point. That's right, Jared. Definitely not a gimme. We saw their kicker, Matt Jumas, taking him from 35, from the 35-yard line. So a 45-yard kick. It'd be something probably quite similar to that if the Bantams don't gain anything on this play. So now the Bantams looking to add a couple more here. 42 seconds left in this first half. Third and 10 for Spencer Fetter on his Trinity College Bantams offensive unit. Fetter having a great day under center. 12 of 19. He's thrown an interception, but 188 yards. Only sacked once. He spread the ball around pretty well, too. Devontae Reed, five catches for 63 yards. Sean Clapp, two for 63. Walsh, three for 39. And McLaughlin, two for 23. And what's been setting that up has been the run game. Kirby, 10 carries, 69 yards, 6.9 yards per average, and a touchdown. That's really how you set up the passing game. Chunk plays on the ground. He's been doing that. Now Fetter set back deep. Will Kirby to his right. Fetter takes a snap, rolls out right. Sends it back the opposite direction. There's a cast from Walsh. And Walsh, he's still on his feet. The Jumbos force him out of bounds. And that's a great play call from the Bantams. One of the few times so far the Jumbos have really brought pressure. It looked like a design blitz, but a screen, a tight end screen. They had blockers out wide. Easy chunk play right there. And great play calling from the Bantams. Now Fetter looking to put this one into the end zone, hands it off, and taken down, taken down by the Jumbos at the five. Will Kirby, another carry. 22 seconds left. And another timeout from the Bantams to stop the clock. I believe that's, that's their, their last. final timeout. So right here is going to be passing from now on. Can't really keep the ball on the ground uh, with no timeouts left. Of course, they could surprise us. You never know. Um, 22 seconds left. Look for the ball to be in the air for the Bantams and then go into the half for the Jumbos and try to reset, get back into this game.
Now Fetter brings his Trinity Bantams offense back onto the field. 22 seconds left here in the first half. Second and five. Excuse me, second and goal on the five. Now Fetter with Kirby to his left. Reed in motion. Fetter immediately looking at him. Excuse me, that's the tight end in the end zone. Looks like it was Max Roach. Excuse me, no, Nicholas Zalanskis. Third and goal on the five now for the Bantams. Yeah, and interesting to see the philosophy here from the Bantams that they don't pick it up on third down. If they do not score here, we saw them earlier willing to go for it. Do they value a field goal here to go up 22-3, to three, or are they, you know, is this a shot, and if they miss, they're going for it again? Better. Takes the snap. Immediately looks up for Reed, and it looks like Reed hauls it in. And he does. Another touchdown for Devontae Reed. Spencer Fetter to Reed. Five-yard touchdown pass for Spencer Fetter and the Trinity College Bantams. At another touchdown, they lead 25-3 to here. And that's pretty textbook right there. Get a one-on-one -on -one matchup. You put it up for your one, number one receiver. Little fade route. He goes up, secures it. A big body play right there from Reed. He's their number one guy for a reason. And as I said before the game, uh, They've spread the ball around and it's giving them opportunities to feed their guy. And the extra point is up and good. 12 seconds left to play here in this first half. Jumbo's trail 13, three, excuse me, to 26. Hampton Trout now set back to kick off for the Bantams. Andre Smith to receive for Tufts. Andre Smith did have a kick return touchdown last year. Set back deep in the end zone. Looks like he wants to take this one out, and he does. There goes Smith. Hit hard, but still on his feet. And Smith brought down at the Jumbo 24. Andre Smith on the kickoff return for the Jumbos. Dan Calderon on the stop for Four seconds left. Looks like Berluti may just take a knee. Maybe a shot here to bring the Jumbos into the half. And Berluti does take a knee. It's going to send the Jumbos into the half. They trail 26-3 to here after one half of football here at Harold O. Zimmon Field. Jumbos have a lot of work to do in this second half. Trinity very dominantly on top. They lead the Jumbos. And we'll be back in about 20 minutes for the second half of this game.
don't wanna let you know you're so hypnotic magical go 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 go
probably learn more from him than he's learned from us. I think they're a real important part in my life. I can't describe it. It feels amazing. Team Impact is a national nonprofit that connects kids living with serious or chronic illness with college athletic teams, forming lifelong bonds and life changing outcomes. When you spread the word about Team Impact, you have the power to change lives. And welcome back to Harold O. Zimmon Field for the second half of this first weekend matchup between the Tufts University Jumbos and the Trinity College Bantams. Jared, it's been all about the Bantams here at Harold O. Zimmon Field. They've really just torn apart this Jumbo defense time after time. They lead 26-3. to And after two bad snaps from the long snapper going over the head of Berluti, the Jumbos find themselves in a pretty rough spot and Jared you said it before we came on but it, it really it's really deja vu just a year later yeah it really is a sense of deja vu for the jumbos one year later here opening game of the season against Trinity and the result is looking pretty much the same last year at this point they were down 35 to 7 right now they're down 26 to 3 so a similar situation they're in and a lot of it has to do with the first half offense last season they only mustered 149 yards in the first half this year even worse 104 yards total in the first half that's simply not going to be enough to get it done um, so really a disappointing start for the jumbos in a lot of ways and really a reminder of the struggles that they had last year. Yeah, Jared, I, as you said, it's it's been a, a really tough start, but the Jumbos now have an, a whole additional half of football, 30 more minutes for this team to really show all that they're about. The time of possession has been extremely skewed towards the Bantams, and the defense has been on the field a while, but despite that, the Jumbo's defense has gotten better as the half went on after that initial 53-yard rush by Will Kirby, the Bantams running back. They've held him to 2.2 yards per carry, which is nothing to sneeze at considering how elite this Trinity offensive line has been, of course, led by Kyle Woodring. They've got Ryan Wiley, Patrick Donovan Jenkins, Matt Almanzi, and Robert Mahali on that left side so yeah as you said they Tufts defense has done a good job protecting uh, against the run holding the you said 2.2 yards and that offensive line yeah has been getting uh, maybe not up to their standards in the run game in the past game however they have been giving uh, the quarterback uh, a lot a lot of time to pass and when he has time in the pocket it's a completion at this point we know it he's he's going down the field he's slicing up the defense he truly is an elite level passer in uh, the NESCAC and we saw that in the first half and when there's no pressure it's going to be a completion down the field and there's going to be a guy open and he's most likely going to hit them so uh, you know good and bad for the Jumbos probably a little more bad than good but last year when they were in the situation they didn't quit second half they more than doubled their output of yards uh, they put p points on the board they had uh, I believe a 21 point fourth quarter 14 point fourth quarter that that game uh, sure this game it's not quite over yet but Either way, you would love to see the Jumbos just get some spirit, get going. The thing is, the Bantams, they're a powerhouse. They're a great team. They were probably favored to win this game. The Jumbos knew that. They came out flat, and it hasn't looked good. But the season's not over. And the Bantams are a team that are going to compete every week in and week out. If the Jumbos' second half come out, make a run, put some points on the board, they can still have some confidence going into week two. That's right, Jared. Still plenty of time to change the narrative. And now the Bantams... It's going to be Hampton Trout back to kick off and Andre Smith to take it back for 
the Jumbos. He set deep in the end zone as this Jumbo special teams unit gets ready once again. And Trout boots it long. Smith is going to take a knee in the end zone, and the Jumbos are going to be out at their own 25 to start this one. And Michael Berluti and the Tufts Jumbos, who combined for 104 yards of total offense in the first half, will start first and 10. A brand new set of downs, a brand new half of football. And the Jumbos are looking to put up a quick seven. We'll see if Coach Savetti opens his playbook a bit. Didn't go downfield a whole lot, which we've seen plenty of from him in previous years. Now Berluti. Quick pass and quick catch from Cade Moore. So back to a staple of the playbook. As you said, they haven't been looking downfield a lot so far, but Berluti is a guy who we know can. He can attack all three levels of the field. He can attack with his legs, and we saw that really more in the second half of last season. First half looked a lot more like this, so interesting to see if they can find that shift in dynamic. Now they hand off to Johnson. He splits it out wide. He's still going, using his speed, and a flag. Looked like somebody grabbed the face mask of Tyler Johnson. And it looks like they may be adding a little bit to the end of this. Not quite sure, though. We'll have the call from the official in a little bit. And another threat of an option on that play right there for Baluti, But the handoff outside, and Johnson runs hard to pick up a first down, if it stands. And we'll wait for that signal. Still talking to Coach Savetti about the foul. And we've got a hold on the Jumbos. Penalty is going to be accepted. It's going to remain second down. Penalty is holding on Tops. That wipes out a big chunk play, largest of the day for Tyler Johnson. Not what you're looking for the Jumbo. Sometimes it looks, seems like it's one step forward, two steps backwards. Looks like it's still going to be second and five because that hold was pretty well down the field. Berluti now with Johnson to his right. He takes the snap, looking to pass. He's going to do it with his feet, finds a hole, but he's hit hard in the middle of the field. A consistent theme for this Trinity Bantams defense. They've been hitting real hard, making receivers think twice about catching that ball. Some of them turning upfield before they catch it, and Berluti gets crunched in the middle of the field. And that's the third or fourth time Berluti himself has really been hit hard by this defense. You don't like to see your quarterback put in harm's way like that, but with the way the offense has been going, he's needed to make plays with his legs, and it puts himself in situations uh, that you really don't want him to be in. That's right, Jared, and the Jumbos went through three quarterbacks last year. Berluti, the third of them, winning the last four games of the year and earning the starting spot this year in training camp. He takes the snap. Looking down the field, has a man that should be pass interference, but they deem that ball uncatchable, and the pass intended for Jaden Richardson is incomplete. It's going to be fourth and one. A lot of bumping, a lot of shoving. Didn't look like the cornerback turned back for the ball, and out comes the punting unit, Berluti. Getting ready to boot this one away as the Jumbos go three and out. Yeah, he found a one-on-one -on -one situation right there, and he took the shot. Unfortunately, the ball was underthrown. Richardson did look like he had a step on his man, but with the ball underthrown like that, no call. Berluti back to punt. And Berluti, the line drive punt. It's going to bounce for a little bit, and it gets a jumbo roll. Still in bounds, and an excellent punt from Michael Berluti. Goes out of bounds at the 17. Berluti's punting continues to be uh, the highlight of the Tufts team so far today, but another fourth and short situation where they elect to punt instead of going for it. Yes, this time in the, you know, the wrong side of the field, uh, converting there, not converting there would be detrimental, obviously, but at some point, the team's got to start taking risks. They've punted now, what, five times, uh, all in fourth, uh, fourth uh, down situations where it was at least conceivable where they could go for it. So far, the point, uh, the choice has been punt every single time. We'll see at what point that dam breaks, and they just need uh, to take a shot. And now Spencer Fetter back on the field with Will Kirby to his left. Jumbo defense has been on this field a while. And a long one downfield. And they throw the flag for a face guard. An unbelievable call considering what happened literally just two plays ago. Yeah, That ball well underthrown. 
They're going to call this one a pass interference, but Jared, I'm not so sure I agree with this one. Take a look at the scoreboard for a replay. Yeah, for sure, never turns around right there, uh, which, yeah, in most cases is a pass interference penalty. He puts his arms out, doesn't hold on to the receiver, breaks up the pass, made contact there, and that was enough for the call. But, yeah, as you mentioned, you go back literally two plays, very, very similar situation, a shot passed down the field with the corner not turning around. They deemed that one uncatchable, no flag. So a little bit of an iffy call right there, depending on the way you look at it. Now Fetter gets a nice break. Will Kirby still to his left. Looks like this is going to be a run. The Bantams hand it off to Kirby. Kirby looking to make something happen, but he's bottled up and taken down at the line of scrimmage. Jumbo's trying to swipe that ball away. So the defensive line continues to stand strong in the run game, especially when Kirby's in the game. He's struggled to generate a lot of yards on the ground since his first 52-yard touchdown. So if the Jumbos can get their uh, act together in the pass defense and maybe slow down Fetter just for a play or two, they have set themselves up to get the ball back uh, and, and make some plays on offense. The Jumbos need the ball back, and they need it quickly. Spencer Fetter set back with Will Kirby to his left. Fetter takes the snap, fakes the handoff. He's looking downfield once again, and it looks like someone just fell down in the middle of the field. Sean Clapp looking for a flag, but does not draw it. Maybe a little bit of a makeup call, Jared. Not quite sure, but it looks like Clapp fell easy. Yeah, I can't tell if he tripped on a defender or just on his own feet, but either way, no call right there, setting up a third and long. And the Bantams have not been afraid to take shots downfield. We've seen that so far. Uh, and you know they want to convert right here and put this game out of reach. Absolutely, Jared. Spencer Fetter has been here before. He knows this is a gritty Jumbos team. Jumbos... The last time they took down Trinity was 2019, so those first years are now seniors. Spencer Fetter, set back, takes the snap. Not a ton of pressure, looking back for the ball, and he catches it. That's Sean Clapp on the sideline, breaking a tackle, and out of bounds just over midfield. Well done by Sean Clapp to reel that one in. Yeah, and we come into this game really wondering who is that number two receiver for the Bantams. Would it be Matthew Laughlin? Would they be looking to the tight end more? So far, it has been Sean Clapp. He is lined up out wide with Devontae Reed on most uh, plays so far, and he's been making plays. Now Kirby in the backfield. He's got it. Still running hard. Gain of about six or seven for Will Kirby. And the Bantams' offense is churning once again. Jumbo's had them third and long, but... Sean Clapp yeah. collecting that long pass. Back to Clapp for a minute. He's listed at 6'4", 205, so really a big target, and they're using that size on the outside, throwing him deep shots. Now Fetter drops back. Some pressure, and a nice catch there on the other side of the field Clap by again. the Bantams. Looks like it's Clapp again. Yeah, again, they're really utilizing this man. With Reed drawing a lot of the attention from the defense, they have him in a one-on-one -on -one crossing route, and that ball was perfectly placed. You cannot ask for a better throw from your quarterback than that. Put it where only Clapp can get it. Again, uses his size to bring it in. Looks like another false start there on the Bantam. So this is going to back him up just five yards. They'll be on the Jumbo 25, maybe Jumbo 24. And... Uh, with 11.28 left to go here, Trinity Bantam's offense still rolling. Yeah, simply put, the Tufts defensive line is not getting to the quarterback fast enough. They're trying to generate pressure. There was a free rusher in uh, the face of the quarterback on that last uh, completion, but he didn't get there fast enough. They're giving him just enough time, and when you give him time, he's going to find a man downfield. At some point... Uh, they're going to have to drop back more. They're going to really have to start sending real pressure because they're not phasing him at this point in the game. OJ Armstrong back in the game, lined up with Devontae Reed. Reed behind. Fetter, he's got it. Looks deep. Tried to dunk it into Thomas Walsh, but just out of his reach. It's going to be second and 15 for the Bantams. And there you go. Pressure got there just a little bit quicker right there. Maybe rush the pass for an incompletion. Now Kirby in the backfield with Fetter. 
A lot of wide receivers set out. This jumbo secondary has not contained those bantams. The receiving core has been elite today. Fetter looking deep in the end zone and no catch there. But looking right back at guess who? Sean Clapp again. And another one where he reeled that pass in. They rule him out of bounds. See if you get to uh, one foot in right there. And Jared he did not, but another strong catch. They're looking to him time and time again. And Jared, this jumbo secondary, this the tallest of them is Lewis Timmons standing at six foot two. Yeah, simply Should outsized by the Bantams offense. That includes Cla um, that includes their tight end. They are exposing them, and we knew the secondary would be a work in process. Progress. A lot of new guys as compared to last year. Uh, so far, mixed results. And it looks like a catch in the backfield for Devontae Reed, taken down by the Jumbos. That's number 93, Javier Rios. And it looks like the Trinity kicking unit is going to come out now. Ball is on the Jumbo 20. So it looks like it's going to be about a 37-yard kick. It's going to be Jumis. And the Jumbos look like they get a hand on it, and that's no good for the Trinity Bantams. This could be the momentum that the Jumbos need. Yeah, a bit of an awkward snap right there. Got it down a little late. Pressure came around the edge for the Jumbos. Uh, not sure if they got a hand on it, but definitely influenced the kick. Never made it to the goalpost, and now here you go. The Jumbos, their decision to punt pays off. They hold the Bantams to no points, and now the offense needs to get going. Berluti only... Six for 14 for 44 yards, that's not going to do it. That's a yards per attempt that is just not getting you down the field. So at this point, they have to start stringing some uh, some plays together. Now Berluti in the backfield with Johnson to his left. Johnson takes it. Tries to run over the defense once again, unable to do so, and he's taken down. Another tackle for Casa Grande. He's got five tackles in this one. He leads his team. And Gio Arquia enters the game at tight end. Uh, played defense last year. Uh, looks like he'll be more of a blocking tight end for the team this year as they line up in a heavy set. Now Berluti. Hands off to Johnson who runs right. Trying to cut it upfield but can't turn the corner. And he's taken down after another run of about two or three. Establishing the run really does seem to be a point of emphasis uh, for Coach Savetti, as I mentioned before the game, but just so far has not consistently generated yardage, but they're going back to it time and time again, and it really is ending up in a lot of third downs. This is a third and short, but you, you want to try to avoid third downs as much as you can. Uh, and so far, they've really been trapped in kind of a cycle of, of run, run, third down, punt. Now Berluti with Johnson to his right. Maybe looking to draw a man offside. Hands off to Johnson. Tries to rush around. Turns the corner. Gets around to the right. Hits a man. Nicely done by Tyler Johnson. Turns the corner on third down. Reverses direction in the backfield. And gets a first down for the Jumbo. So they continue to stick with that run. Yeah, and really strong decision right there. Uh, you know, run up the middle. There's nothing there. Reverse it back outside, and he finds the edge. That's the type of running that they're going to need. Tyler Johnson always runs hard. Now Berluti with Johnson to his right. We've got two wide receivers out wide. Berluti hands off to Johnson once again. No, he keeps it himself, and there's a pass down the field, but unable to reel it in is Phil Lutz. He's had a real rough day in that regard. But Phil Lutz still chirping back at that Bantam defense. Lutz has a couple of drops. He's gotten hit pretty hard as well today, too. And uh, that may be deep in the back of his mind as he's trying to reel those in. Yeah, maybe heard the footsteps. That looked like a post route. And Berluti, you know, no hesitation on that. He whipped it in there for him over the middle of the field. Hit him in the hands uh, in between two defenders. Uh, probably a catchable ball. But, yeah, as you said, he got hit hard earlier. Who knows how that's affecting him. Now Berluti set back. Fakes to Johnson in the backfield. Caught by Lutz. Lutz still hit hard. Taken down by four Trinity defenders who make it a point of emphasis to stay on top of him. He's at the bottom of that pile. And it looks like a bantam defender is down. 
immediately calling for the sideline is his teammates. Yeah, bubble screen on that play, but just did not fool this experienced Bantam's defense. There was no blocking out there, and, you know, they're lining Phil, up, Phil Lutz up to get hit right now, uh, throwing a bubble screen with no blocking. Uh, so right now the play calling for the Jumbo is definitely uh, hit or miss so far, and a little more miss than hit. Third and nine, another third and long. Again, this is kind of the cycle they've been stuck into. they got to start getting the ball downfield more effectively. Uh, we know Berluti can do it, and he's been putting some throws on the money, but the opportunities just have not been there so far for the Jumbos. He's able to hop up and run off the field under his own power. Always love to see that, but now the Jumbos, third and nine. 8.13 left to go here in the third quarter. Berluti taking the signal, the hand signals from his teammates. Berluti in there with Jaden Richardson out wide on the other side. It's going to be Lutz. Berluti takes the snap, looks downfield, a lot of pressure. Deep ball for Phil Lutz. No, that's Cade Moore. And Cade Moore unable to reel it in. Another deep shot. Just incomplete for the Jumbos. That one in the hands of Cade Moore. They had him in a one-on-one -on -one over the middle of the field. He beat his man. Ball hung in the air for just a little too long. Enough for the defender to make up time and break that pass up. A missed opportunity there for the Jumbos. And they'll have to punt again. And Jared, the Jumbos have consistently gone for shots on third down and left them with these fourth and long situations you'd like to see them take a shot earlier in their in your set of downs yeah I, I i agree with that a lot i think they keep setting themselves up to punt i think you got to move the sticks more often you got to get yards on early downs another great punt from michael berluti this one out of bounds and i think something we're seeing with the jumbo's offense is that Last year, there was a large reliance on the production of Phil Lutz as the number one receiver. He was going for over 100 yards every game. He averaged, you know, over 110 yards per game. He had games with 170 yards, 160 yards, and that was their offense at times. Big plays from Lutz, consistent production from Lutz. And today, you know, he hasn't been there, and the, the offense has really struggled to adjust. Hasn't really found production anywhere else. Haven't seen a lot of Billy Dunn today. Haven't seen a lot of production from the other receivers. Zero production out of the tight end position. So with an offense like that, there's... You know, it's pretty one-dimensional. Take away Phil Lutz. What are they going to do? Jumbo defensive unit out there once again. 7.43 left to go in the third quarter. Fetter. He takes the snap. Hands off to the first-year receiver. That's number 26, Tyler DiNapoli, who cuts it upfield and brought down by a couple of Jumbo defenders. Hit hard by the Jumbo defense. I would say a strength so far. The tackling for the Jumbos has been strong. They've been uh, preventing extra yards after contact from the running backs of the Bantams uh, so far throughout today's game. Now DiNapoli out wide with Fetter in the backfield. A lot of receivers. No one deep for the Jumbos. Looks like Cam O'Brien's going to be in man coverage. And Fetter looking out wide. Jumbos read that well. But DiNapoli still on his feet. Taken down by O.J. Armstrong. And you look at that play. Compared to the bubble screen the Jumbos ran on the last possession, watch 85, Thomas Walsh on that play. He lays a mean block at the bottom of the screen. Comes in with a force and sets up uh, the gain on that play. Compare that to the Jumbos' last possession. There was really no blocking out wide. That's how you generate plays on, uh, on screen passes like that. It all comes down to really doing your job. That's right, Jared. And the Jumbos not doing their job there. You saw they had him wrapped up. They had DiNapoli wrapped up there on the right side, but DiNapoli able to churn through the Jumbo defense once again. Cuts it upfield. Re really tough break for the Jumbos, and now they're over midfield. Fetter. It looks like another false start from this Trinity offense. So really the only thing that the Bantams have not been doing right so far uh, has been uh, some issues with penalties, mostly false starts. But if you're the Bantams, if that's your biggest problem and you're up 26-3, I'm sure you'll take it. Work, it, uh, work on it in practice this week. Now first and 15 for Trinity. Looks like DiNapoli is going to stay in the game next to Fetter. Uh, 
Now Fetter hands it off to DiNapoli. He cuts up left. Still going. And DiNapoli, really a workhorse with the ball, running upfield, trying to make it all the way back to the original line of scrimmage and more. Looks like a gain of about nine. And he kept those legs moving, and that sets up a much more reasonable conversion now. Now Fetter hands it off to DiNapoli once again. And DiNapoli brought down by Jonathan O'Neill, the graduate student. So Kirby's production has gone a lot to DiNapoli here in the second half. Maybe a little bit of a split backfield, but clearly they trust Tyler DiNapoli. Freshman, uh, first year, starting immediately. Six foot tall, 187 pounds. He's got good size. Clearly, he's a physical runner. This seems like a guy that they're uh, willing to trust from day one. Hope he can be, you know, the next guy in that backfield for years to come. And outside of that first run from Will Kirby, he's been largely silent. DiNapoli having a little bit more success here. Fetter takes the snap. Immediately looks to run. And he's taken down. We'll see if he got the first. Cam O'Brien signaling that he's short. And the two officials run in about a yard short as well. But again, this is that mid-distance, Jared. Doesn't look like they're going to punt. They will likely go for it here with fourth and one. Yeah, really no reason for them to punt right here. And uh, on the topic of DiNapoli again, really, oh, and here comes the punt team uh, as we, you know, eat our words a little bit. So... Interesting decision here, up 26 to three, maybe no reason to risk it. But on the topic of DiNapoli, just great coaching from Jeff Devaney. Like he is very willing to go with the hot hand. Whatever's working with him, he's gonna go for that. Uh, he saw that so far with DiNapoli. We've seen that so far with the wide receiver core, who they've been going to. Um, and I would expect that to continue. Sean Clapp, an example of that. He rolls with the hot hand and so far it's been working. And a delay of game on the Bantams, they'll back this one up five more yards. O.J. Armstrong set deep for the Jumbos to return this punt rather than Andre Smith. Armstrong's had some success at, with the punt returns in uh, recent memory. As we said, he's an athlete. He's a guy you want with the ball in his hands. At a low punt, Armstrong, he's going to field it, trying to make a couple men miss. He's trying to cut it upfield on the right side, but unable to do so. He'll take it to about the Jumbo 18. Both teams scoreless here in this second half. 3.44 left to go. Jumbo's trying to change that here. They trail 26 to 3. Out comes Berluti in this unit once again. Jackson Butler out wide with Phil Lutz and Jaden Richardson. Tyler Johnson to Berluti's left. He takes a snap and an immediate handoff. Hits the hole hard is Johnson. Nice spin move. He's got himself about seven yards on the play. And Tyler Johnson's been, honestly, picking up a lot of steam as the game has gone on. We saw this from him last year. He hits the hole hard. That was a quick cut as soon as he got the ball. Watch here, right? Quick cut through the hole, makes a man miss with the spin move. He's known for his spin move. Broke that out several times last year, one time on a touchdown reception. Um, he's a guy, again, they can go to, but that needs to be more consistent. The play calling uh, has been hit or miss so far. And a bantam down on the field. That's why we've got a bit of a stoppage. Gives the Jumbos a bit of a gift, though as they ran the ball, and of course time not on their side at this point. Looks like he's able to hop up. He does, and limping off, looks like that's Wiggs Crowley. The 195 pound senior from East Milton, Massachusetts. Jackson Butler comes off for the Jumbos. Berluti. Looking to lead this offense once again. Tyler Johnson in the backfield. Out wide is Richardson and Lutz. Now Berluti. H hands it off to Johnson, who cuts it out wide. Lowers his shoulder. It looks like he picks up that first down. Well done by Tyler Johnson. Looks like a gain of five. 
Johnson running hard, and now we see them, you know, switching up the runs between the inside and outside run plays. This one, a little outside zone, and he manages to cut up field for the first down, picking up those yards that we needed. Again, now first down, can they get ahead of the sticks? That's right, Jared, and the Jumbo is still trailing by a lot. Time not on their side. Berluti hurrying it up just a little bit. Hands it off to Johnson, who cuts it up right. He's really running with a lot more pep here in the second half. You can see it. He's, he's coming off of the handoff with a lot of energy, and he's picking up chunks on every single play so far. And he's really strong. When he lowers that shoulder, you're going to feel it as a linebacker. And Johnson doing a great job trying to do everything he can to get these jumbos back in this game. Only a three-yard gain. We've seen the run game now in the second half. Let's see how the pass game can complement that. Berluti. He takes the snap. Fakes the handoff over the middle of the field. Wide open is Lutz. And Lutz reels it in. He's down. But across midfield and at the Trinity 40-yard line. Great catch by Phil Lutz and a great throw by Michael Berluti. Lutz had a ton of space and Berluti just needed to guide it right into his hands. And exactly what I was talking about right there. They use the run to set up the pass. Successful run on the ground. They go play action. They stack the box. They committed and they had a man open for a first down. Pass again. Berluti, he's got it over the middle of the field. It's Lutz again. And Lutz down inside the five and a flag after the play. Looks like it's going to be roughing the passer. They're going to catch someone back there for a late hit and looks like it may be half the distance to the goal after the long catch by Phil Lutz. Jumbo's going to what they do best, long passes down the field to their receivers. Lutz yeah. finally able to reel two of, two of them in. Berluti is really accurate over the middle of the field, and that's where they've been targeting Lutz. Again, the ground game was working. They go to the play action, and the defense is biting. They stack the box in the previous two plays. Lutz in a one-on-one -on -one situation with no safety help over top. All Berluti needs to do is get that ball away from the defender over the middle of the field. He's done that two times in a row with some success. Now a chance to really, you know, put some points on the board and maybe get back into this game. First and goal on the three, Berluti with Johnson to his right. Hands it off to Johnson who cuts it out to the left. And the Jumbos find the end zone for the first time of the season. There's Tyler, there's Tyler Johnson for six. And the Jumbos finally cutting into this Trinity lead just a bit. 26 to nine is your score as the kicker Vaughn Selig comes on looking to make it 10. And suddenly, the Jumbo strung together a very, very nice drive. That was more of the offense we saw in the second half of last season. Uh, really strong pass and run dynamic right there, and Johnson breaks into the end zone to put the Jumbos on the board with their first touchdown. That's right, Jared. The run game opens up that passing game, and the passing game opening up the running game. Exactly. Tyler Johnson, really athletic running back, doing it all for the Jumbos on that drive. Selix kick is up and good. The score is now 10 to 26. The Jumbos inspiring a little bit of hope in this crowd as they begin to ignite. Yeah, the crowd here at the Oval is getting into it. The Jumbo offense coming alive here in the third quarter. Now it's on the defense who have looked better in the second half as the game has gone on. They have looked strong. They have kept the Bantams from running up to score too much. Can they can keep that going, give the Jumbos another shot. Jumbos get the ball back. If, they're, if the defense forces to stop here, the Jumbos get the ball back with a chance to make it a one possession game. That's right, Jared. And just, you know, the momentum here has shifted. Neither teams had scored in this second half and the Jumbos strike first here. And uh, it looks like cutting it back just a little bit, a little bit earlier than last year as well. Jumbos still trailed by 16, but looks like we've got a game on our hands now. Yeah, not waiting for the fourth quarter to make an attempt to get back into this one. They're pushing the issue. And a nice kick from Walsh. No fair catch. Let's it roll into the end zone. And it'll be a touchback. So the Bantams out to their 25. And they narrowly avoid a safety right there. That ball had touched the return man. The Bantams coming back out onto the field. We'll see who's back behind center. It is Spencer Fetter. Spencer Fetter looked like his leg was bothering him just a bit, but he'll be out there for the Bantams. Will Kirby behind him, not DiNapoli, who had some success on their last set. Still grabbing at that leg is Fetter. 
Vetter takes it, hands it off. And Kirby stood up at that line of scrimmage. That jumbo defensive front has been real strong here in the second half. Yeah, noticeable difference, not just from last year, but also just from the first quarter of this game. They have looked stout, they have looked strong, and they are really playing with effort and intensity. You can tell, by the way, that they are putting bodies into the running backs of the Banthams, that they're here, they're here to fight. Getting a lot of pushes, that defensive front, as Spencer Fetter gets set to take another snap. Looks like Trinity's changing that play call at the line, though. Fetter continues to stretch out his leg on Lough the field. Laughlin out wide. Devontae Reed in the slot. Kirby to his right. And Fetter takes a snap, gives it off to Kirby. And Kirby stood up at the line once again. Gain of three. And it's going to be third and long for the Trinity Bantams. And the situations that the Bantams have been putting Tufts in throughout the first half is really what Tufts is now doing to the Bantams now. You get these stops on first down and second down. You set up less favorable third downs. Uh, and Feder, if he's, if he's hurt, we'll see uh, how that affects him in the pass game. So far, we've only seen runs uh, since his injury. That's right, Jared. We keep, see Fetter, keep seeing Fetter grab at that right leg. He grabs at it again right there. There's a man in motion. Goes out wide, but the jumbo sniff it out. And Will Kirby taking down a great tackle for a loss by the Jumbos. That's Victor Garza. Excuse me, Shane Weiner, the junior. Well done by Shane Weiner to sniff that one out. Fourth and six. And the Jumbos send the Bantams three and out just, at, just after they score a touchdown. To see if the Jumbos can bring this one back. That's a very strong play from Shane Weiner right there. He read that one and made a beeline for the tight end, knocked him down to force a fourth down. And as I said, they've really put the Bantams in the situation that they were in for the whole first half. You can tell when you get positive momentum on defense on first and second down, it sets up difficult decisions for the offense on third down. We saw the Jumbos attempt to run a bubble screen on third down, get it snuffed out. And now the same thing happens for the Bantams, uh, and it gets snuffed out by the Jumbos. So a little bit of change in momentum, flipping up the sides right here. Can the Jumbos continue their momentum from the last possession and continue to generate chunk plays on offense because we know when the Jumbos are rolling, that's how they beat you. Chunk plays down the middle of the field usually. That's right, Jared. And set back now is Andre Smith, one of the premier playmakers on special teams for the Jumbos. Of course, a pretty prolific runner as well. Jumbo offensive unit getting ready to come right back out on the field, but it is the fourth quarter, only 15 minutes left in this game. There's the line drive punt. Takes a strange bounce. And down at the Jumbo 32-yard line, out comes Berluti and this Jumbo offense once again. Really great job by the Jumbo defense on that last set of downs, giving the offense a chance. And out... The personnel for the Jumbos, it's going to be Bertolutti with Johnson to his right, far side of the screen. That's going to be Jaden Richardson and Phil Lutz, near side. Takes the snap, hands it off to Johnson, who cuts it out right, takes it back up the middle, and Tyler Johnson just making men miss in the middle of the field. A gain of seven for him. He's coming alive here in the second half, and it's possession in and possession out, snap in and snap out. He is making plays, making men miss, running through man it's really a running back that can do everything he's good in space but he can also run over man in front of him if he has to and that's exactly what you want out of your backfield Johnson to the right of Berluti who takes the snap fakes the handoff reads it and Berluti picks up a couple yards helmet comes off and they've been trying to use the run again to set up that option Defense didn't really bite on that one, but some yards still picked up, and they're going to continue to try to use uh, the rhythm of the offense to set up the option uh, as compared to the run. As Berludi exits the game, looks like his helmet may have... Uh, yeah, he's got to go off for a play, and coming in is going to be Matt Crowley. Looks like somebody grabbed his helmet right off his head. And now Matt Crowley on third and one with Johnson to his right. Just like last year, first game against Trinity, Crowley came in the game. He's the one who threw three touchdowns in the fourth quarter. They hand it off to Johnson, though, who hits the hole hard, and he picks up a Jumbo first down. The Jumbo is able to pick up something on offense here. 
Well done by Tyler Johnson, and Berluti right back in there. Could have sniffed the run play even before the ball was snapped. Yeah, really a, kind of an obvious call right there, but with the way Johnson is running, not much they could do about it. Really great subtle movement from Johnson. His cuts are very strong. He plants in the ground and goes by a man just enough to pick up the first down. Now Berluti with Johnson again to his right. Takes a snap. Looks downfield. Nice pass over the middle of the field. Looks like it was Jackson Butler, but no. Once again, it's Phil Lutz who picks up the first down. And now the Jumbos have a bit of offensive momentum. Baluti doing a good job on the bootleg, sliding out of the pocket. He saw it collapse, felt the men behind him, and fired a strike right to the chest of Phil Lutz. And really, the offensive momentum shift has been two guys, Tyler Johnson and, of course, Phil Lutz. Now Johnson to the left of Berluti, who takes the snap, hands it off to Johnson, who runs right up the middle. Didn't get a whole lot of block there. And a little bit of extracurricular activity after the play. And they get the Jumbos number 79. for That's Travis Sipalia. Looks like they're going to get him for a personal foul and a really ill-advised personal foul there. You just pick up a little bit of offensive momentum. And... Uh, that's going to set them back. Yeah, not ideal right there uh, at this point in the game to pick up a personal foul penalty. It's going to be 15 yards, and the Jumbo's offense moving back. As I said, sometimes it often feels two steps, uh, one step forward, two steps back. Right now, can't let them phase them. Got to continue to keep the momentum going. They know what's working. They know what's working on the ground, and obviously Phil Lutz through the air. Berluti has been accurate, uh, but just got to forget about that and pick up yards here. So now the Jumbo's on their own 46. Berluti over the middle of the field. Nice catch, and he falls right down after the play. Once again, Phil Lutz, his favorite target. Yeah, who else? As I said, the reason the offense really seemed stalled in the first half was the lack of production from Phil Lutz, and this can cut both ways. The fact that they're so heavily reliant on him is not the greatest, but when he's producing, they are a dynamic offense. We saw that last year, and right now he's producing again. He's a guy who got them 100 yards a game last year. He's doing it today. He's carrying the offense. Unfortunately, there hasn't been a lot of help around him. Now third and long for the Jumbos. Phil Lutz over 100 yards now today after that sixth catch. In motion, that's Butler. Berluti looking down the field. Finds Lutz once again, who's still on his feet on the left side. Gets a nice block. He's running towards the pylon. And there's Phil Lutz in the end zone for a Jumbo touchdown. And a 44-yard run from Phil Lutz puts another six on the board for the Jumbos. Going back to old reliable, Johnson the first six, Phil Lutz the second six, and Phil Lutz has been doing it all for the Jumbos in the second half. Jared, as you said earlier, it's going to be the tale of two halves, and the Jumbos proving that they can stick with the Bantams. They're going for two here, so Berluti set back with Johnson to his right. One man in motion, Berluti has it. Looking for him, a lot of pressure. Throws it, and caught, no, out of the hands of Cade Moore, and the Jumbo still trail by 10, but 16 to 26, 11.38 left to go here in the fourth quarter, the Jumbos. Looking to take this back. Yeah, they're not out of this game yet, and obviously the X Factor has been that guy, Phil Lutz, uh, the touchdown from him. Berluti did a great job extending time in the pocket, found him over the middle of the field, and Lutz is really a dynamic player with the ball in his hands. Cutting up field, he made guys miss and got into the end zone. So a lot of positive momentum here for the Jumbos. Flip back to the defensive side. We've seen a lot of strength in that defensive line uh, and maybe a hobbled quarterback um, for the Bantam. So definitely a shift in momentum here. Um, you know, it's a shame the Jumbos have to put themselves in a hole to start out the game. It feels a lot like last season, but at least we're seeing some fight from them. 11.38 to go. The game is certainly not over yet. That's right, Jared. And Phil Lutz, who had just one catch for 20 yards in the first catch, in the first half, excuse me, now has seven catches for 151. Whew. He is a 
producer. They feed him the ball, and he puts up numbers for sure. A thousand yard season, the first ever in the history of Tufts um, football as a receiver last year. It looks like he wants to do it again. You'd like to see Berluti spread the ball out a little bit more, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. A fair catch there from DiNapoli is going to send the Bantams to their own 25 for another drive. The Jumbo defense needs another big stop here as the Jumbos trail 16-26 to with 11.38 left to go. But an excellent drive from the Jumbos capped off by a beautiful 44-yard catch and run from Phil Lutz. The fact is we knew this offense could be explosive. We saw them be explosive for most of last year. They were a high-scoring offense. They had the most yards of any offense in the NESCAC last season. They're showing why. It's all about consistency. If there's one word that the Jumbos need to master, it is consistency. Now Spencer Fetter still in the game for Trinity, although hobbled. Devontae Reed in motion. They hand it off to DiNapoli. DiNapoli tripped up at the line. The Jumbos take him down once again. Looks like it's going to be second and nine. And Trinity just trying to run the ball, run out that clock. Spencer Fetter still trying to shake out his legs. Yeah, since Fetter uh, came up hobbled, we've yet to see him throw down the field. Uh, but we'll see if that changes. Could just be us, but we'll see. Fetter still in the game for the Bantams. He's all reliable for them. Number 12 set back with DiNapoli behind him. He takes a snap, hands it off to DiNapoli. DiNapoli crushed at the line of scrimmage, and the jumbo defense is fired up. That's Tyler Roach giving a couple of claps to his sideline. It's really been a production all over the line for the jumbo so far. Roach, uh, Butler, and Uteri have all had big plays so far today. Same, uh, same with a lot of members of the defense. They've been rushing hard, they've been generating a lot of push, and that has been the difference so far between the first quarter and the rest of the game. And Will McCreary has entered the game for a hobbled Lewis Timmons. It looked like Timmons may have cramped up just a bit, but Fetter behind center, DiNapoli to his right. This jumbo crowd is all fired up. They're gonna milk all that play clock, and Fetter takes the snap. Couple of men in coverage, he rolls out right, and just throws it out of bounds. Spencer Fetter, what looked like a man who could run away from anything, unable to get away from it there, and has to throw it out of bounds. Another three and out for this jumbo defense, and they have come out really strong in the Probably second half. Probably the most complete defensive possession from the jumbo so far. They stood on the line, generated push, stopped the run, and on a passing play right there, that wasn't just a bad throw, there was nobody open. They stood tall, they generated pressure, forced the quarterback out of the pocket, he had no choice but to throw it away. These are all the things he wanted the Jumbo's defense to do coming in today with a new defensive coordinator in Justin Manning. And Justin Manning has really drawn up a great plan of attack for this Jumbo defense, and a kick right at the line, picked up by the Jumbos, that's number 45. That's Will Duncanson, the linebacker. He feels it. And the Jumbos are going to have a real short field starting in the red zone. Number 45, Will Duncanson. Really great play. We've seen a couple of low punts. And we'll get the replay for you in just a moment. But a real great break there for the Jumbos. And they've got a short field. Under 10 minutes left to go. But here comes the Jumbo offense. Yeah, that's two straight punts where the punter attempted to do do sort of a rugby punt, holding onto the ball, running out, and punting it late. The first time, it was a line drive, decent punt. That time, didn't even make it back to the line. Picked up by the Jumbos. Not sure what the strategy on the punting unit is right there for the Bantams, but goes tough directions and a huge momentum shift. Absolutely, Jared. And now Berluti with Johnson is left. We've seen that run game open up the passing game. Jaden Richardson out wide, but they hand it off to Johnson. He's got a nice run to the left side for a gain of five and looks like the Jumbos have a bit of momentum now. Yeah, really, first half, the special teams mistakes were on behalf of the Jumbos. You know, two snaps over the head of the quarterback, but right there, going the other direction, a bad punt sets them up. This is prime position to make the game a one possession uh, deficit going into the final 10 minutes. And the Jumbos showing that they can hang with these Trinity Bantams in this second half. Michael Berluti now with Tyler Johnson is left. Johnson takes the handoff, runs it up the middle. Excuse me, Berluti 
kept it himself, and it looks like a flag on the play. Not quite sure what the call is. To be honest with you, I was watching Johnson, who I thought had the ball. Yeah, he sold the play action real well on that one, but it didn't fool a the defense. They were in the backfield immediately. No choice but to throw it away. Not sure what the flag is. Probably not intentionally grounding. Intentional grounding, excuse me. He seemed like he was outside the pocket, but the tackle box, we'll see what the call is on the field. And it looked like that flag came well before he got rid of that ball anyway. Maybe just a free play, which is why he held on to it. It is going to be against the Jumbos, though. Not quite sure what the call was. Still haven't signaled it up to the press box. Looks like Trinity took the hold. So second and 16 now for Michael Berluti and this Jumbo's offensive unit. They've got three receivers out on the right and one up at the top of your screen. Berluti looks right, looks left. Gets it to Johnson. Johnson still behind the line of scrimmage. Taken down by Trinity. Good tackle there from the Bantams. Little screen pass right there. They've tried to go to that uh, a couple times today. Not fooled were the Bantams. They swarmed Johnson in the backfield. Uh, and he couldn't pick up any yards right there. But again, they've been looking to the screen game to pick up yards. It's been, uh, been a little inconsistent though so far today. You need to have good blocking if you're going to pick up uh, chunk plays on, on screens in the backfield. Now the Jumbos at the Bantam 24-yard line. Berluti with Johnson is right. Drops back. Plenty of time. Looking for his man. Fires deep for Johnson. But that one's incomplete. It's going to be 4th and 18, and likely the kicking unit's going to come out. On that play, the freshman defensive end, Lyndon Gay, for uh, the Bantams, put a lot of pressure on the right side for Berluti, forced him to exit out, bail out the pocket, and he couldn't find anyone downfield. So strong push right there from the freshman uh, for the Bantams. Field goal right here would make it a one-possession game, so not a total loss for the Jumbos, but of course you've got to convert the field goal. We know about their issues with that last year. And Vaughn Selick, the freshman kicker, needing to make an immediate impact for the Jumbos. This would be a huge field goal for them here. It's going to be a 41-yarder for Vaughn Selick. Jumbos have struggled with the long snap today. But there's the snap. It's up. Does it have the distance? Yes, it does. And Vaughn Selick, no, it does not. Excuse me. And it's wide, no good for Vaughn Selick. Yeah, weird angle for us right here. Looks like it missed maybe wide right. Unfortunate for the Jumbos, a chance to get them back in the game. Falls by the wayside, reminiscent of last season. Yeah, the Jumbos have struggled with their field goal unit in previous years. Vaughn Selick trying to push that one through the uprights, but unable to do so, and Trinity catches a break. Now Fetter back under center for the Bantams. Hands it off to Kirby on the right side, but Kirby stopped behind the line of scrimmage and a tackle for loss for this Jumbo defense. That's EJ Comerford and Uteri on the stop for the Jumbos. That Jumbo defensive front has really been stellar in this second half, but Trinity still just trying to run out that clock. Fetter. Jumbo showing blitz. Maybe, maybe recalibrating right here. And the Jumbo crowd stays loud, trying to disrupt the Trinity offense. Fetter with Kirby to his left. Three receivers to both of their left. Kirby fakes in the backfield. Passes it way downfield and way out of bounds. Spencer Fetter trying to avoid all kinds of trouble. Another strong defensive possession so far. And a flag after the play. Not quite sure what this one's going to be. They're going to talk this one over. 
Can't imagine that this would be intentional grounding. Looks like they'll pick up the flag. No flag on the play. And the Jumbos have done a really good job in the second half, limiting the deep play uh, for the Bantams. We saw first half, they had some easy shots downfield, one-on-one -on -one opportunities, but deep safety back, they've really been packing it in uh, and, and keeping the, deep, uh, the offense from picking up chunk plays through the air. Now Fetter once again, Kirby to his left. Fetter rolls out to his weak side, changes it back the other way, and out of the reach of his man, Sean Clapp. A really great decision there from Spencer Fetter, but outside of the reach of Sean Clapp, a fourth down for Trinity, and this punting unit comes on once again. It's a, a punting unit that has struggled. And you know, just as I said, they were eliminating one-on-one opportunities, of course, there's a one-on-one -on -one shot, but that's a difficult throw. Going back, the uh, he was rolling left, throwing back to his right. Uh, you know, he tried to put it on him, just a little over the hands in a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Uh, big receiver, though, Clapp, he's a big target. Now Andre Smith set back deep. And a rough, short punt there from the Bantams. Gets a Bantam roll, though. Andre Smith doesn't pick it up. It's going to be down there at the Jumbo 26. So a lot of field in front of Michael Berluti and this Jumbo's offense. But seven minutes and 11 seconds left to go in the fourth quarter. The yeah. Jumbos looking to storm back. Jumbos have scored 14 unanswered points. First, the touchdown from Tyler Johnson and the extra point from Selick. And then the touchdown run 44 yards from Phil Lutz and the non-converted two-point conversion. Now Berluti in the backfield with Johnson is right. Lutz and Richardson out wide. They hand it off to Johnson. Johnson can't make anyone mix. Now Berluti with Johnson is right once again. A couple of receivers. Trinity seems to be playing more prevent defense. And a nice pass to Jackson Butler who cuts up field. Butler, a gain of about 12. He's out of bounds now. Should stop the clock. And I like this a lot because we know the quick out. We talked about it earlier. It's a staple of the offense. But it really is more effective when you mix it in with other plays. This second half, you, that's the first time we've seen it. But they've mixed it in with chunk plays down the field, shots downfield. If you're going to the quick out every play, it's not going to work. But right there, mixing it in, a uh, great pickup with Jackson Butler. Now Berluti takes the snap. They run the ball again. And Johnson, the first tackle for loss behind the line of scrimmage. And the Jumbos, that clock keeps ticking. The Jumbo crowd in dismay over the play call. Berluti wants the call quickly. Is that clock? Still ticking away and is not on the Jumbo side. They're still down two scores. Yeah, the crowd wants a pass. Berluti now takes the snap. Looking downfield. There's Lutz wide open over the middle. He's got a man to beat and tackled from behind. A wrap around the helmet. That's number 34 on the tackle for the Bantams. And I got to highlight the pass protection on that play was phenomenal. The, the Bantams sent pressure and it was picked up perfectly by the Jumbos. Gave Berluti plenty of time to step up in the pocket and deliver an accurate throw to a guy who he knows is going to make a play after the catch. And the officials spot the ball and that clock is going to keep ticking. But Hunter Tully on the tackle for the Bantams. If Tully doesn't make that tackle... That's a touchdown. Lutz takes that straight to the house. So a really good job by Hunter Tully, the experienced senior from Taunton, Massachusetts. Lutz now up to 186 yards on the day. At this point, he's, you know, every week it's just something new, and every week it's incredibly impressive. He is probably the best receiver in the NESCAC right now. Oh, Jared, there are a lot of really great receivers in the NESCAC, but Lutz certainly up there in that category, you know, You'd say, you'd like to say that 
he's Berluti's favorite target, but it may be the other way around. Lutz may be, or Berluti may be Lutz's favorite quarterback because it seems like this offense is really running through Phil Lutz. It really is, it really is. And at some point, uh, it's a detriment, but we'll talk about that later. Now Berluti, looking deep, takes a shot to Richardson. Richardson with the catch! But outside the back of the end zone, Berluti just a little too slow firing that ball off, and Richardson can't reel it in and get a foot in bounds. Just under five minutes left to go here. It's going to be second and ten for the Jumbos. Probably through that a um, second too late to give him a chance to catch it in bounds, but good to see Berluti targeting someone other than Lutz down the field. Not something we've seen a lot today. Uh, confidence in his other weapons will go a long way towards getting the Jumbos both back into this game, but also to have offensive success later in the season. There's a man in motion. That's Butler. Berluti takes the snap. Lutz over the middle of the field. Berluti trying to take it himself, but he's wrapped up. A sack there. Number 53, that's Noah Glantz. And I think Berluti had the right idea there, trying to step up and make a play. But great uh, diving tackle by Glantz right there to bring him down. Uh, impressive defensive play to bring them to third and 13. And in comes Chase Mangini, out comes Cade Moore. So the Jumbo's going with a little bit more size here on this third and 13. Berluti back under center. Johnson to his right. Third and 13. Butler in motion. Berluti takes the snap. A nice pass there and hit hard is Phil Lutz. Once again, a common theme, Casa Grande taking down Phil Lutz, who has hit hard for at least the eighth time today. Looks like their flag on the field and the offensive coming off the field. Not quite, not quite sure what this is. We did get an unsportsmanlike conduct from the Jumbos earlier. This could be an unsportsmanlike on Trinity. We're not quite sure which way this one is going just yet, but... Things are getting chippy. It's a very close game, very rough game. The offense is coming back on. And I just want to go back to that previous play. Jumbo's picked up some yards there, but again, I want to point out Lyndon Gay on the edge. He came flying around the edge, got a great jump, and sent the uh, right tackle back at the quarterback. Really impressive play so far from Gay as they signal for a Jumbo first down. And it is going to be an unsportsmanlike conduct on the Trinity Bantams. You know, Jared, things are getting chippy, but late in this game, 3.53 left to go. You've got to contain your emotions just a little bit longer. The Jumbos got burned for it earlier, and now the Bantam's getting burned for it here, giving the Jumbos an opportunity to put this one in the end zone. Berluti and the Jumbos offense fortunate for another opportunity. Cade Moore, Jackson Butler, Jaden Richardson, and Phil Lutz, the receiving core for him. Berluti looking for Richardson. Richardson up! He reels it in, but is he in bounds? No, he is not. Wow, seemed like he might have had a chance to get one foot in there. Let's check the replay. Not sure if he did. That definitely a close play right there. He fade route to the right corner of the end zone. He makes a great play to high point it, but he comes down with a foot on the line. Indeed, out of bounds. But uh, looking to a classic play in the end zone, one that worked with success for the Bantams earlier. Jaden Richardson. One of the tall receivers here for the Jumbos, standing a tall six foot two, 210 pounds, the junior from California. Berluti looking to get this one into the end zone with Johnson to his left. Same receivers as last play. Looks like a design run for Berluti, and Berluti's taken down. Yeah, a QB draw right there, and there was room, I have to be honest. A little. You know, one second more before the defender gets there, and he had, might have been a touchdown. He had room in front of him, but a great diving play from the defender to bring him down and brings up third and nine. Again, technically, there's room for them to pick up the first and get a new set of downs before a uh, touchdown, but probably looking to the end zone right here. Now Berluti with Johnson to his left. Richardson, Lutz, Butler, and Cade Moore. Berluti over the middle, looking for Lutz, and it's tipped. Well done by the Bantams defense. A lot of contact in that end zone, but uh, the tipped pass, it looks like the looks like the 
kicking unit is going to come on, and Selick is going to have another chance to put this one through the uprights. Yeah, Berluti just didn't see a linebacker coming over the middle of the field right there. Probably should have been an interception. Lucky it was tipped out the back of the end zone. Uh, choice to kick a field goal here makes sense. Seems like Savetti thinks either way they need to stop uh, the Bantam's offense to have a chance to win this game. Selick. Oh, and a fake. But before the fake, wow. the flag comes out. Not quite sure. This may be a false start as they blew it dead. It is a false start. And that's big in terms of, you know, whether or not they were going to fake it in terms of actually making a field goal now. That's a big penalty right there. Again, it's a, sorry, a 10-point game. A field goal makes it a 7-point game. Uh, a touchdown here would make it a 3-point game. Either way, you would need to stop the other team uh, in Savetti's eyes in order to have a chance to win. And another fake. And an interception. Trinity taken down within their own five. Maybe a couple of guys were not on the same page about the fake. And that looks like a designed fake to me. That was not a muffed uh, snap or anything. That was a designed fake all the way, but really nothing doing right there. And that just about wraps this game up. To get no points on that drive, uh, it's going to be a, take a miracle for the Jumbos to come back and win this one right now. Frankly, I'm not sure uh, what the logic behind that call was. The way I look at it, 10-point game. If you go for it on fourth down and you score a touchdown, it's a three-point game and you can even concede a field goal and still have a chance to win. You kick the field goal, you need a stop. But to go for it on a fake uh, kick and get nothing seems to be the least of the three outcomes. And Jared, I'm definitely still scratching my head a little bit as well. A jumbo defense needs a little bit of pressure and a three and out to have a chance. They hand this one off. And tackled at the line of scrimmage is Kobe. Looks like Coach Savetti's going to take his first of three timeouts here. Yeah, just a curious call. Really, with the penalty on the play before, it seemed like they had already shown the fake and that, you know, it wasn't reasonable to go back to it again. Maybe a little bit of reverse psychology right there, but clearly did not come through for the Jumbos. Yeah, Jared, I mean, you take a look at the scoreboard and you're down 10. The three definitely would have helped. And then you decide maybe you can go for the win or tie it up and go to overtime in the case that you can come back down the field and score a touchdown. But I would rather, you know, go for the end zone on a traditional pass play, go for it on fourth down rather than fake, fake kicks have a, I would say, a pretty low success rate. And uh, they'd already shown their hand with the penalty the previous play. So, again, just really not sure um, the logic behind that decision. And the first of three timeouts from Coach Savetti. Still second and ten for this Trinity offense that has been kept contained the entirety of this second half. Jumbos have scored now 13 unanswered points. Very similar to the tale of two halves, but the difference is, Jared, this certainly isn't garbage time. Yeah, but it really is very similar to last year. They made the push. I mean, if we're going to look at the end of this game, the difference between the first half and second half yards is going to tell the same story it did last year. But unfortunately, it looks like the story is going to be the same. The Jumbos are going to come up short. And Jared, there are definitely a lot of things to build on this game. The Jumbos have done a really, really impressive job on the defensive side of the ball. This is an absolute unit of a Trinity offense as Kirby is taken down at the line of scrimmage and another timeout from coach Savetti 233 left to go in the game Tyler Roach on the tackle but Jared still a lot to build on for the Jumbos six tackles for Cam O'Brien six for Matty Drouillard six for EJ Comerford but on the offensive side of the ball it's been all Phil Lutz and Berluti everything designed for Berluti and Lutz has been Incredible. Nine catches for 192 yards for Lutz. Yeah, you're really going to see a better receiving day than that in the NESCAC. The fact is, though, Berluti, 226 yards in the day, only completed 53.3% of his passes, so 192 of his 226 passing yards were to fill Lutz. That's a huge performance from Lutz, but they need production elsewhere, and today it just wasn't there. Billy Dunn, no receptions. Cade Moore, one reception for four yards. Richardson, two receptions for nine yards. It just is not going to be enough to get it done. Tyler Johnson, big day on the ground. But just three guys, this isn't going to get 
the job done at the end of the day. They know that. I think last year they had success spreading the ball around more. So if we're looking at something to build, that's it right there. They have the building block in Lutz. They know he's going to produce. Now it's time to build around that. Um, defense was strong today. The defensive line was good. And the secondary in its first iteration of this new defense, I think, had some strong moments as well. So definitely a lot to build on. Remember, the Bantams are a powerhouse in the NESCAC. But again, a disappointing finish in a game that, again, seemed winnable for the Jumbos at points. Fetter takes a snap, hands it off to his man. That's number four, Will Kirby, once again. No first down for him. It's going to be third and short, though. Excuse me, fourth and short for the Bantams. Another timeout from Coach Savetti. So we'll see if the Bantams decide to go for it. More likely, though, they'll punt. And this punting unit has struggled for the Bantams. On special teams, the punts have been all the freshman, Jack Sokol. He's got four punts for 119 yards, an average of 30, the longest 49. Only one within the 20. And, of course, that one picked up by Will Duncanson. Long shot now for the Jumbos to come back, but the possibility is still there. They did their job on defense. They forced a stop. You get a quick score somehow on offense, and all it takes is an onside kick and another score, and, and there's the game right there. Of course, not very likely, but the door is still open for the Jumbos to make some noise here with 227 left in the game. That's right, Jaron. Hope is certainly a powerful weapon. Andre Smith back deep for the Jumbos. Sokol, the punter, almost blocked, but the flat punt taken by Smith. Smith, the shifty punt returner, trying to make something happen. Can't do so. Taken down at the Trinity 44-yard line. Now 2.19 to go for the Jumbos. No timeouts. So you're going to have to keep the ball in the air, and you're going to have to run some hurry-up offense, two-minute drill, get down the field, get in the end zone, and then pray for uh, some help on your side on an onside kick. That's right, Jared. And, you know, we said it at the beginning of the game that a lot of these really close games have been decided, won or lost, within a three three to five point margin. And the Jumbos gave five points away to the Bantams in this game simply on mistakes. The same mistake twice with the snap over the head. Berluti now looking over the middle of the field for Butler. The Jumbos are going to have to hurry up just a little bit only a gain of six running out of time though they may take this one down to the two minute warning or run one more play ball is set they're going to try to run one more and they get it off before the two minute warning Berluti over the middle of the field to Butler a lot of players didn't really know what was going on but they run the same play twice and now they get the two minute warning 155 left to go the Jumbos 29 yards left no two-minute warning, though. Clock's still running. Berluti's got it. A flag, probably a hold, and Berluti throws it out of bounds. Again, pressure coming from who else but Lyndon Gay. He really has been a standout for me on the defensive end on the field for the Bantams, generating consistent pressure uh, on the right side of the line. But you are right about the mistakes. It's so frustrating. I think any football fan who's watched, uh, you know, NFL, college level, points left on the board can be very frustrating. Today, a missed field goal and a safety. Those five points completely changed the outcome of this game. You look at the call that led to the fake uh, field goal that was missed. The play calling in that situation is completely different if that field goal was made earlier in the game. It completely changes the way that you approach that situation and it completely changes the way the game would be at this moment right now. So again, the points left on the board really coming back to bite the Jumbos. Now Berluti looking deep. A deep shot for Richardson, and touchdown, Jaden Richardson. A beautiful pass from Michael Berluti puts the Jumbos back on the board, and it's been all Jumbos in this second half. Three consecutive unanswered touchdowns. Michael Berluti connects with Jaden Richardson. It's not his first end zone target. May not be his last on the season. And 1.37 left to go. The Jumbos are going to go for two here. Rather, they shift it up. They're going to go for the kick. Vaughn Selick Some trickery. set back. The extra point is up and good from Selick. 
almost off the Jumbotron. But now the Jumbos trail by three. I need a little bit of help here with an onside kick. Yeah. It's going to be all in the hands of, rather, in the feet of Patrick Walsh. Yeah, no timeouts left. You have to assume they're going to kick it onside. To do a normal kickoff here would pretty much be ending the game uh, from our perspective. So you're looking to kick it onside. Back to the touchdown play. Richardson beat his man over the top. No safety help whatsoever. It was a one-on-one, -on -one and Berluti made a great throw. Berluti showing time again. He can make all the throws that you need him to. But now, yeah, wing it a prayer, get the ball back, and the offense has been moving. The defense has really been unable to stop them, so you really got to hope for this onside kick to give the Jumbos a chance to come back and steal a victory from the jaws of defeat. And a really, really impressive throw from Michael Berluti, who seemingly had a man on his back in the middle of that play. Yeah, great poise in the pocket. He stepped up, he saw his man, and he delivered over the top. Now the onside kick coming from Walsh. Rather, they're going to put Selick on the field for this one. And then again, though, the that missed field goal coming back. Three-point game, and what could have been? Well, Jared, that missed field goal, what could have been, but also the two snaps over your head. That 100%. leads to three points and the safety. 100%. Five points, that's eight points you'll leave on the board. We're talking about a different ball game at that point. We really are, and it's a conversation we had so many times last season. Now here comes the kick from Vaughn Selick. It's going to be on sides and the Trinity hands team is out there. Nice kick. And it looks like Trinity picks it up but the ball is out. Trinity pointing that it's theirs. The officials pointing that it's no one. Selick pointing that it's the Jumbos. We'll see who's at the bottom of the pile with the ball. Waiting now still for a signal from the official. Selick wants a Jumbos ball. Need a nice the dramatic entire call right sideline pointing. The anticipation is building right here. Jumbos are pointing their way. Still wrestling on the ground for the ball are the Bantams and the Jumbos. The officials trying to get to the bottom of the pile and a flag. They are fighting on the ground for the ball currently. Neither team is willing to let go. And the officials now point towards the Bantams side. Jumbo crowd not liking it. And another three separate flags now. Number 54, Tyler Roach leaves the pile with the ball, it looked like. But Bantams possession is the ruling. There was a scrap at the bottom of that pile for the ball, and that went on for like a good 15, 20 seconds. Tyler Roach in clear dismay over the call. Coach Savetti patting him on the back for going in there and fighting for that ball. The officials still talking it over, but it looks like it's going to be Bantam's ball. On replay, the ball looked like it was originally grabbed by a Bantam's player who maybe let, let it go. And that led to a bunch of bodies falling on the ball and a fight to see who could hold on to it. Still waiting for the call, both in terms of who has the ball and what the flags are for. The first call was towards the Bantams. And it is going to be an unsportsmanlike conduct against the Jumbos. A second unsportsmanlike conduct against the Jumbos. It's going to be first down Bantams. And the Jumbo crowd really, really letting the officials hear it. And is that a 30-yard penalty? The, the sticks are being moved well down the field. I, I'm not sure where it was originally spotted. But at that point, looks like victory formation might be it for the Bantams today. And, and Jared, Jumbos leave about eight points on the board. Of course, we're talking about a different ball game in that case. But... The Bantams now in victory formation. It's going to be Fetter to take the snaps and the knees. Really well played game by the Trinity Bantams. And a lot of progress from this Tufts Jumbos team who got knocked out and really just picked apart last year by this same Bantams team. If you're the Jumbos, you've got to be proud of the effort that you displayed today. And we said that Games can be won and lost, or the NESCAC can't be won on game one, but it can be lost. Jared, I'm going to fire back at my original comment telling you that because if there's anything that I've learned from today, it's that on any given Saturday, any team can come out and win. 
And so regardless of if you lose week one, anything can happen in this league. The Bantams win this battle, but still have a lot of wins before the end of their season. Still have a lot of games left. The Jumbos, the same number of games left, and really anything can happen at the end of the day. Yeah, you're 100% right. And today, it's, it's very inspiring. It's very frustrating at the same time. The Jumbos showed a ton of fight today. They came back in a game that looked like they were down and out. They showed that their offense uh, has a lot of fire in it, and they showed that their defense has a lot of potential. They put uh, one of the best teams... Uh, in the NESCAC down to the wire. They took him down to the wire today, and it was a game that was certainly winnable, and that is what is so frustrating. It was winnable. It was mistakes that led to the loss. Last year, we saw this a lot. Week one was a little bit of a blowout, but they lost by three points to Williams. They lost by three points to Amherst. They lost by one point to Wesleyan, and all three of those games came down to missed field goals and mistakes. So it's a little bittersweet. There's a lot to build on this week. The Jumbos can come out of this confident that they are a team that can compete for the NESCAC title. They competed with a team that will compete for the NESCAC title, but they need to clean up those mistakes and take it into next week stronger. But uh, a strong start to the year maybe, but certainly a disappointing one. You're absolutely right, Jared. And, you know, it's really, really impressive that the Jumbos were able to bring this one back within three, especially after the way that they started this game. So I'm really excited personally for the future of this Jumbos team and the rest of this Jumbo season. Good luck to Trinity the rest of the way, and for all of us here at Tufts Jumbo Cast, thank you for joining us. I'm Sam Brill, joined by Jared Cohen, Henry Stahl directing, and uh, please stay home safely.